Da 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 da. Okay, wonderful. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Amanda Zitto. If you're new here, I make motorcycle travel vlogs, general encouragement for you to get out and do the thing, and motorcycle camping content, all of the stuff. And this is our celebration that I have returned safely from 8,900 miles total, um, truck included. Uh, just on the bike, 7,791 miles. The bike rolled over 50,000 miles. And also, while I was in the middle of the trip, I got we hit 30,000 subscribers, which is huge. Thank you guys so much for making that possible. It wouldn't be possible without you. Um, huge love and excitement to all of my beautiful people in the chat. Uh, Chris, Scott, my grandparents are watching. Everybody say hello. My mom is watching. Yay! <laughs> hello! Jeffrey from Texas Ridge, Idaho. Chuck, hi from South Dakota. Old guy on a bike from... Canada, <laughs> Paul, yes, John from South Carolina, hi, hello, it's wonderful to see you, I'm hoping that you can hear me, please tell me you can hear me, <laughs> well somebody said 30k, so you must be able to hear me, good, yes, awesome, <laughs> hi, <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Okay. And we are tonight we are drinking um, the Polisher Bourbon Whiskey, which is a collaboration between one of my favorite, favorite people, Montgomery Distillery and CC's Motorcycles here in Portland, Oregon. And my amazing, amazing partner went on a little bit of an escapade to try to find this and found it for me so that I would have it when I got home. And I'm just so, so happy. Um, and Coke and my nice little square ice cube that is no longer square, but that's how it goes. <laughs> Hello. Oh, thank you guys so much. Excellent. Okay. Wonderful. Yay. Hello from Florida. Barry. Barry came in clutch. Okay. So, uh, first story of the stream is that I, in, you know, you guys know that I, wa I installed those Ruby lights before I left and first day riding in california one of the screws holding the lights in totally came out so the light was just dangling by a wire for almost 100 miles um because i had no way to put it in i did pull out some zip ties and put it in um, to hold them up for a little while obviously the zip ties broke multiple times um i had a spare screw for a different part of the bike that just managed to work and that was in there for a couple hundred miles and fell out again so it was like a process going from California to Tampa, like alternating, trying to put a screw in there and falling out, holding it up with zip ties and vice versa until I got to Forgotten Angels and the wonderful Barry went to his shop and got a new screw for it and some um, thread locker so that it wouldn't come out. <laughs> and it has hold tight, held tight all the way from Tampa back to California. So thank you, Barry. You're amazing. Um, <laughs> was one last thing that I had to worry about on the way back. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jay. And Jess is here. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome to meet you at Forgotten Angels, Bill. Thank you. And Robin the Lady Biker is here. Just a quick hello from Down Under. Headed out soon for my first Australian Motorcycle Festival. That's super exciting. Robin, I hope that Australia is treating you well. For those who don't know, Robin the Lady, Bi Lady Biker um, and her husband just moved to Australia. So she's getting to know the motorcycle scene over there. I'm super stoked for all of her future adventures. That's really rad. Um, oh, and the Falco is here. Hi. <laughs> Sean, I see you. I see you. <laughs> Hello from Wisconsin. Hi, Kevin. Hello from California. It was great meeting you at the camp out. Hi, Hook Dog. Yay. Magpie, how many miles do you have under your belt, more or less? Oh, gosh. I don't. That's really difficult <laughs> to try to add up off the top of my head. Um, obviously, Burrios just rolled over 50,000 miles on the trip. Um, I know that I put around 10,000 miles on the Tiger while I owned it. Um, and then 
uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't even know how many miles I put on Lazarus because I wasn't paying attention to the um, odometer when I first bought her. I know that it rolled over like 40,000 or something like that during the pilgrimage. And the pilgrimage was like, I think 6,000 miles inside of Montana on Lazarus. And then all the miles I did before that. So I don't know. <laughs> And then also, like, I rode a bunch of store bikes while I was working at the dealership. So, yeah, I really don't know. That's, I, maybe one day I'll try to sit down and figure it out. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Oh, yes. Hi, Papa. I love you, Papa. Thank you for gifting me Briarios all of those years ago because none of this would have been possible without that bike. And thus would not have been possible without you and your generosity and all of your research put into trying to find me a more capable bike after uh, doing some silly things on Lazarus. <laughs> oh yeah, for those who don't know or like maybe haven't watched like my um, all of my bike garage videos or whatever, um, Briarios, my, my CB500X was a gift from Papa who was watching. Um, after the pilgrimage when I did some very silly things on Lazarus. <laughs> Yay! Oh, yes, Barry, I'm stoked to see you rock and mountain roll. That will be awesome. Hi, Jeff from Florida. Hi, Biker Gnome. Yeah! Yeah! The 500X Megan picked up today only has 1,400 miles on it. A lot of catching up to do, but maybe with this one, she can ride more than I wrench. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sure she'll get a lot of good use out of it. Um, <laughs> the Raging Redneck and Megan uh, rode from... You guys rode from Billings on Grom clones, like Chinese Grom clones, and... That is a long way to go on a Grom, like a Grom clone, like 125 cc's. And like Eastern Montana is not kind to little bikes, let me tell you. Uh, serious respect. And I know that Megan will get so much good use out of her CB, like for sure. <laughs> Hi, anonymous bikers. Wonderful to see you. Hi. <laughs> Oh, Whiskey Chaser is here. Hello. I met Whiskey Chaser at Forgotten Angels. He is a giant sweetheart. If you guys aren't already following Whiskey Chaser, definitely go do that. He did a heckin' iron butt to uh, Forgotten Angels and all the way back. So serious respect on a Yamaha Bolt. I'm pretty sure. I Don't quote me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it is because I remember just from her two wheels being like, on a Bolt. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Anonymous Biker. I appreciate it. I like the new hat, new hat, new adventures. Um, okay, so thank you for bringing up the hat. So this is actually one of my old hats. Um, I realized when I posted on Instagram that I wasn't super clear when I said that I was reunited with my Las Vegas Stetson. I had two Stetsons before the trip. One I bought in Montana, which is the one that I lost. This is the hat that I bought in Las Vegas at AIM Expo in February. Um, and... <laughs> this is the Bailey's that I bought in Tombstone. It has, uh, it has seen better days. <laughs> um, it, it, like, it survived from Tombstone to Florida, but it did not survive Florida and the humidity and the rainstorm that it went through very well. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's all kind of out of shape. I tried my best to put it back into shape, didn't work out, and so I took it to a hatter in Temple, Texas, um, if you watched my update last week, you, you kind of know this story. Um, and he sprayed it with stiffener to try to iron out this part. He didn't realize that stiffener is flammable. So it burned my sweatband on the inside of the hat. And the stiffener also shrunk the hat a bit. So I've been trying to work to dampen the felt whenever I can and put it on my head uh, until it dries out to try to, to stretch it back out. But... <laughs> <laughs> so this is my Las Vegas Stetson um, that was in my truck when I left. So when I got back to my truck, I was reunited with my good Stetson. Um, but no, unfortunately, the Montana Stetson is gone forever. The Falco, thank you so much for the super chat, my man. Cheers. 
Congrats on another successful cross-country trip. What is today's whiskey flavor, Amanda? Um, for those who were not here at the beginning, um, this is uh, the Polisher, which is a collaboration between one of my favorite, favorite, my favorite whiskey distillers um, in Montana, Montgomery Distillery, and also CC's Motorcycles. So you can get these at the liquor store um, down the street from CC's Motorcycle Coffee here in Portland, the one on Sandy. I don't know where else is carrying them, but that's where my partner had to go to uh, grab this for me. Hi. <laughs> Okay, how many miles you think you'll have on the bike by the end of this season? Um, I normally put on about 10,000 miles a year on the CB. That's what I've been averaging the last like three or four years. Um, uh, short of like 2020 was more, of course, because I did all of all those miles like across country that trip um, in addition to what I would have normally ridden. And um, same this year, I'm sure it's going to be a little bit more. So because of doing like 7,791 miles on this cross country trip. So I still have like the whole riding season to go. So I, if I'm being conservative, I think that Briarios will be at like um, 58,000 by the end of the season, probably. Um, especially cause we're riding to get on ABB Fest this year not taking the truck. So yeah. I'm, I'm going I'm gonna conservatively say 58,000 will probably be on Briarios by the end of this year. Um, Robin, you gonna be at the Revzilla ADV Fest Sturgis from July 14th and the 17th. I'm thinking of riding the TAT and hitting that up midway. I will be at the Get On ADV Fest in South Dakota in July. Yes, I will be there. Gary will be there. Gary is the reason I'm going again because he loved it last time. And also there's just so much really good riding in the Black Hills. There's no way that you can go just once and be able to see and do everything that you want to do. Um, so yes, we, we will be going again for sure. Yeah, dad is following Whiskey Chaser. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Bought a Navi two weeks ago, has seven miles, 700 miles on it already. That is awesome, Ron. Those were such fun bikes. I'm still, I'm still trying to work out how I can buy one and, and make it worth it. <laughs> there, they were so much fun. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yeah, definitely has character now. <laughs> yeah, the hat, the hat has seen some things. Um, I think if I. I think if I set it down and like put some weights on the brim, like it'll flatten out again. Um, like the, the benefit of him having sprayed it with stiffener is that like if it sits in one position long enough now, it'll hold that shape. So I just need to like put some weights on the brim and leave it for a couple days and it'll, it'll be back in shape. <laughs> Still windy there in Texas, Martin. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think I have had enough of West Texas for a while. Um, no offense, Texans. There were other really great parts of Texas, but oh my God, I am so tired of the wind right now. <laughs> Favorite, it's working. Yes, definitely. It's <laughs> nothing like a great hat and you are having a good hair day. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. The hat is helping. <laughs> Amanda is the motorcycle camping queen. When it comes to gear or equipment, there are no others. Oh, thank you, Hook Dog. That's very kind of you. Thank you. When do you get the Africa Twin? Asks Paul. Um, for those who don't know, um, I'm waiting on... Uh, Honda is going to let me borrow an Africa Twin Super Sport DCT here soon. Um, they're all in at MotoGP in Texas right now, so I think it's going to be a week or two before uh, we can uh, link up so that I can get the, the new Africa Twin, but I should have it for about a month. Um, as far as content-wise, like, you'll see it on Instagram soon, but, uh, I don't think videos with the Africa Twin in them w will be coming out until probably July. End of June, maybe? Probably July. Probably July. Um, the current cross country series will be probably 14 episodes. Um, so it'll be the end of June before the end of the series comes. And then I have to do like the, the videos that people have requested. Like, I'm going to do another budget breakdown because this trip was much more expensive. Oh, 
than the 2020 cross country trip. Um, like obviously because I had to buy two tires instead of one on this trip, like as an extra, like four or five days than the one that I did in 2020. So that's also going to add cost. Um, but, uh, I wasn't thinking when I was budgeting for this trip, I wasn't thinking about it being spring break in Texas and also being in the South during high season, especially like the Southwest, their high season is in the spring. So hotels were like almost twice the cost of what they normally would be. Um, there was a hotel that I stayed at in Yuma, Arizona, um, with a deposit ended up being like $200 for the night, which was crazy. Um, there was a hotel that I stayed at in California that was like $198 and wow. Whew. Um, yeah, it was quite more expensive. Um, and then of course I will do a, what I packed for the trip video. Um, cause I've gotten quite a few requests for that as well. Um, and then maybe like what I would have done differently video by the end of it. So yeah, it'll be like July before you'll see footage on the YouTube channel of the Africa twin. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Terry. James went, thank you so much for the super chat. Cheers, dude. Thank you. Yeah. I did 7,500 miles on my 2019 V-Strom 650, but I took three months to do it. Respect for sure. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> I appreciate it. And like, like this trip, I felt like I was so much more relaxed than the 2020 trip because like it came out to be very similar mileage on the motorcycle. Um, like, because I think the one in 2020 was also like 7,700 or 800 miles. Um, and this one was 7,000. Oh, wow. I've already forgotten the number. 7,700 or seven. So, oh, wait, I wrote it down. Hold on. I knew this would happen. That's why I wrote it down. Um, 7,791. Um, so in terms of just miles, like the 2020 trip and this trip turned out to be very similar mileage wise. However, I was doing it in like 24 days, I think in 2020 versus like having like 34, I think, I think this trip was 34 days. So a whole extra 10 days totally changed the trip. Like, uh, in 2020, I was averaging like 400 sometimes 500 mile days and then like a bunch of really big pushes at the end like a 700 mile day a 600 mile day in order to get home on time because I had a, a day job to come back to like a, a regular nine to five job um and this trip being able to set my own schedule to a certain extent um apart from like my partner wanting me to be back um uh sooner than later that was my main restraint and uh being able to add that extra taste to uh, extra 10 days on totally changed it. And it meant like I had a couple of zero days where I didn't have to go anywhere. Like obviously forgotten angels. That was like three ish days where I didn't really go anywhere. Um, but also like I had a zero day in temple, uh, Texas waiting for a tire and I didn't have to stress about it, which was really nice. Um, I had another zero day in Carlsbad, New Mexico, which was really nice. I think that day, like I maxed like 20 miles or something like that. Um, and I really, really needed those days. And I also had multiple days where I only went like a hundred or 200 miles. Um, and that honestly is like my ideal pace. Like if I could like stay like going 170 miles a day, that is my ideal pace for a uh, road trip. Um, obviously I did like the, the 500 miles from Palm Springs to Sacramento, um, coming back. Cause I just wanted to be back in my truck at that point. I was ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> and I know sometimes that's blasphemy to talk about that, but it's true. Like every trip I experienced that part at the end where I just want to be home. Um, and so I, I do much higher mileage days at the very end of the trip because I just want to go home. Um, and I'm motivated to do that. So it makes those long miles easier for me. Like the, the fatigue that comes with those long miles doesn't affect me mentally as much because I'm motivated. Um, going on a tangent now. I <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> do I carry a fire extinguisher? No, Nancy, I do not. Wear the 18950 with the bill for going east. No Texas wind. Um, I, honestly, I was very glad to have the GT930 on this trip and not the 18950 because I hit wind 
going both directions. It didn't matter which direction I was going, it was horrendous. Like going east, it was awful. Coming back west, it was bad. Like that, there was no winning. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So not having the the bill, like the visor on the top of the AT950, because I was wearing the GT930, which is just a plain modular. There's like a street modular. There was no visor. I was really, really glad because I didn't have the neck pain that I normally would have after going through high winds like that. So I'm kind of grateful I didn't have the AT950 on this trip. Life's journey at 50. Thank you so much for the super chat. Met the folks at Moto Camp Nerd uh, at March Moto Madness in Tennessee. Told them thanks for sponsoring you. Oh, thank you so much. Ben and the people at Moto Camp Nerd are just the sweetest human beings ever. I, they're, yeah. I, I only have nice things to say about them. They're very kind. Cheers. <laughs> Dork says Tenere is lighter than the Africa Twin, so when you get the Honda, you can ride his and compare. <laughs> I know I know that the Tenere is lighter than the Africa Twin. I did get to ride the Africa Twin DCT uh, Super Sport while I was in LA for the Navi launch. Um, I didn't do a video about it because I only had like a couple afternoons with the bike and I didn't think that was enough time to like really make a video about it. Um, I didn't have time to like study the specs and like information about it like I did um, when I made the Navi video. Um, so yes, I, I know that the Super Sport is much more heavy than the Tenere, um, the Africa Twin Super Sport. Uh, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think a better comparison would probably be the standard Africa Twin to the Tenere, but even then you're still talking also a fairly large CC difference because like even the standard Africa Twin is still like, it's still a thousand CCs or 1200 CCs or something like that. I, I, don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, and the Tenere is 700. So it's not even really a fair comparison in my personal opinion. Um, it's like that video that I did ages ago where I compared the Tiger and the CD500X. There's really no comparison. I was just doing it because I owned both of them. Um, and it was more of a comparison for what I needed to do for the kind of traveling that I do. Um, not necessarily like a good comparison of both bikes. Um, and uh, like even having had the short time on the Tenere and the short time that I have on, had on the Africa Twin, the Africa Twin still makes more sense for the kind of traveling that I do. And also, I'm terribly biased. So I have wanted the Africa Twin since 2016. Actually, since 2015, I have wanted the Africa Twin. Um, and like, to a certain extent, you also have to take into account like what somebody's preference is. And my preference is for the Africa Twin. So <laughs> uh, the Tenere is so fun. Thank you, Barry, for letting me get to ride it around uh, Forgotten Angels. Uh, it was a ton of fun. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm obviously biased. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to hang out with Josh and many of the crew at the Dirty Shame last night, riding up from, uh, and back to Naples in a six hour round trip. Had to break in the new Moto's Desert HT. Awesome. Roland, I hope that you had a wonderful time. I, uh, Hook Dog said that he ran into the same hotel cost problem. Yeah, it was, it was gnarly. It, it was, it's very difficult for me to like pay like almost twice as much as like what that hotel would have cost otherwise like i'm if traveling in the southwest isn't new to me and a lot of those hotel hotels are like normally like 94 98 dollars at most for like a nice best western room um and like maybe 110 for a nice holiday inn room and like I, yeah that was rough jim holber thank you so much for the super chat Rocky Mountain Roll will be my zero days in the middle of a 7,500 mile trip in August, maybe on a new bike. That's super exciting. Thank you. Cheers. That's super. I'm stoked for that. Yeah. Hi. I, uh, wait, where was I? I lost myself. I lost my place in the chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, somebody asked what Africa Twin Super Sport. Is that a question about like what it is? So the Africa Twin Super Sport DC, no. Mark, you know what that means. I'm confused by your question. <laughs> yeah. The short video posts of life on the road were nice to see. It's good to see the reality of weather and distance on a rider. It's part of the journey, thanks. Thank you. I mean, I think that I show that in the polished videos, but 
I, I'm glad that you enjoyed the, the little snippets. What boots and gloves to wear for cold weather riding? Uh, asked Bill. Um, I wear the same pair of boots all year round. <laughs> I have owned the Garen uh, all-terrain Gore-Tex boots since 2017. It's been quite a few years. Um, I Yeah, I wear those boots all year round. Doesn't matter. I just change the kind of socks that I wear. If you haven't discovered like merino wool skiing socks, those are where it's at for the winter time. Um, uh, and for cold weather gloves, um, I have a couple different pairs. Um, I have like a pair of snowmobiling gloves that Climb makes. I also have like a short wrist Gore-Tex version that Climb makes um, uh, that's good. Um, and then also like I have a pair of like mobile warming heated grit, heat, heated gauntlet gloves. Um, obviously the snowmobile gloves and the heated gloves from mobile warming don't have any slide protection in them, but they're warm and they let me control my, my, uh, controls. Wow. Words. Um, much easier than some other like motorcycle specific winter gloves, um, that end up kind of restricting the movement of your fingers. Uh, so uh, do what is important to you. Always be safe um, and take everything into account. But I, the snowmobile gloves have by far been my favorite for a very, very long time um, in the winter time. Just because like I have, like uh, when it gets to a certain temperature, I get blood flow problems in my fingertips. Um, so the hippo hands, the heated grips, and then the snowmobile gloves have worked out really well for me. <laughs> must have made things easier to not have to worry about getting back to work. Yes, definitely. <laughs> that like definitely reduced my stress level a lot. No migraines on this trip, which was amazing. I had two migraines on the first cross country trip um, just from the stress of trying to make everything work out so that I would be back to work on time. Um, so that was, that was nice. <laughs> Oh, hi, Smokey Devan. It's wonderful to see you. Hi. Are you going to have to have a video about how you picked the route, not the software, but how you decide where you wanted to ride? Uh, I don't I don't know if I'll actually do a video about that because like I feel like I covered in like I made a series a little while ago about how to plan a motorcycle trip that kind of goes goes over how I decide where I'm going. And it's mostly like just an amalgam of a lot of places that like if I watch other people's videos or like over the span of like uh, different like travel magazines like different places will mention different stuff and I will just like tag all that stuff on a map um, and mark it for future trips so I just kind of picked the stuff that I wanted to see the most and that's how I made my route <laughs> apart from like also keeping it as far south as possible so that I would be as warm as possible also, there was a bunch of people who told me that I would be super hot during the trip, and uh, I'm very glad that I still brought all of the cold weather stuff with me, because the first half of the trip from California, I think all the way until Louisiana, I was still cold. It was still, like, in the 40s and 50s during the day, and, like, a couple of below freezing nights for sure. It was definitely really, really cold in Big Bend um, because of the high winds. And also, it's just really cold there still at night because you're still talking about the desert. It's still going to get really cold at night. Um, so I'm still really glad that I took all of my cold weather stuff. Take that, people who thought that I was going to be stupid hot the whole time. Huh. <laughs> um, coming back was definitely a lot warmer than going uh, east, though. So... I, I just, you know, be prepared for all kinds of things. And I was, so yeah. They've got two ABV Fests this year, one at the end of the month in SoCal and July in South Dakota. Yes, I'm aware. There is one in Mojave at the end of this month um, and the one in South Dakota in July. I will be at the one in July. Yes, July. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I am planning 24... 2400 mile one way trip this fall from Ohio to Arizona. You've given me the encouragement as a single woman to go. That is awesome, Karen. That is so cool. I'm so stoked for you. You're going to have a blast. It's going to be so good. Yeah. <laughs> the 18950 is loud for sure. Um, 
I think that the GT930 is like kind of similar in the amount of wind noise that you're getting inside the helmet. Um, maybe the AT9, AT950 is a little bit more with the visor on, um, just because it's like kind of feeding that wind directly into some of the vents. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Sack lunch vids. You're very kind. Thank you. You can remove the bill from the AT950. I know. Yes. I've had that helmet for since 2018. I'm very, I've had a couple of different versions of that helmet. I've gone through like three, three versions of that helmet. But yes, I, I know that the bill can be removed. Um, the GT930 is just new and uh, Scorpion released their comm system, the Exocom that fits like directly into the side of the GT930. So it's not this big bulky thing on the side to have a comm system for like music and stuff in your helmet. Uh, and you know, they sent it to me. So, cause um, if you're not aware, Scorpion sponsors me. So they sent me the new GT930 modular and the AT, not the AT, the T520 full face that just came out that has the hole built in for the Exocom. Um, so yeah just made sense to take a new helmet and uh it was also nice not having a big giant comm unit hanging off the side of my helmet <laughs> that was nice <laughs> where is your shadery teddy bear I, i'm not here <laughs> i may have missed this are you doing dct or manual at um honda is letting me borrow the africa twin um adventure sport dct so it is the automatic um that's the one that they have so that's what i'm going to borrow and i'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth because i am beyond excited to be able to borrow it <laughs> hey lee it's wonderful to see you hi thank you mark mark corrected me from earlier um the the africa twin is 1100 cc's <laughs> Hi. DCT is 17 pounds heavier than the manual. Good to know. Yeah. Oh, hi, Darren. It's so good to see you in the chat. Hi. As you can tell, I'm a little bit behind. <laughs> I just got the bike I've wanted for, for four years, the Honda NM4, the closest thing to the Akira bike available. Yeah, Sack Lunch Vince. It's so cool. He sent me, video, sent me a photo of it. It does look really, really cool. It's totally an anime bike. Someone needs to get you a 2016 Africa Twin. Put the word out. Find you a 2016 AT. Yes, Barry knows. That I have very like very specific sentimental wants for the 2016 Africa Twin standard. So much like <laughs> I just want that bike. <laughs> Still can't believe you spent several days in Temple, ten miles from me. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> Uh, there, there were quite a few people who were upset that I was in their hometowns and didn't let them know. But to be totally honest, like, uh, for most of this trip, I was not in the headspace to be good company. Like, a lot of the times I would get to the hotel and I would just be in, like, this just storm cloud mood. And it took a couple hours for me to get out of it. So, like, showing up to somebody's house in that storm cloud mood and then, like, trying to be kind and like happy is just not who I am. So I didn't want to put that on anybody else. <laughs> so, like, um, especially like people who are meeting me for the first time, that's just like not the, like the way that you want to make a first impression, you know? Um, so I hope that um, you guys understand uh, for those who I went through your hometown and you didn't, and I didn't say anything. Um, it's not because I didn't want to see you. It's because I didn't want your first impression of me to be grumpy um, on the road, Amanda. <laughs> Dre, yes, the trip is over. I made it home this week. It's very good, very good. Uh, the official um, polished videos should be out not next week, but then the week after. So I think I'm going to put out a little highlight reel, a little trailer for what's to come next week. Um, because I'm still, still in the process of transferring footage. I have been working on this for like two days because <laughs> there is almost three terabytes of footage from this trip. 
<laughs> and for context, the cr first country trip, first cross country trip in 2020 was only a terabyte of footage. So I have a lot to go through. <laughs> so uh, next week is just going to be like a nice little highlight reel. <laughs> Oh, oh, for the love of knobs, thank you so much for the super chat. Welcome home, Amanda. Thank you, Nathan. I appreciate you. Hugs to you and Chris. I can't wait to see you next week. Mm. Okay, where was I? I go back to where I was at. Okay, the trip is over. Yes, okay. The Instagram updates were nice. Yeah, thank you. And also thanks to everybody who was following on Instagram um, for all my stories. Have I ever used Bunk a Biker? No, and I probably will not. It's just not my jam. Thank you. <laughs> Cat sitting in upper right frame. Oh, oh, she's gone now. But yes, Calamity will probably be making appearances in the background as she wishes. <laughs> Picked up gear for Rocky Mountain Roll from Moto Camp Nerd this weekend. Thanks for the discount. You are most welcome, Paul. Um, for those who don't know, you can use my code magpie at motocampnerd.com to get like 10% off of your order. Uh, it supports me. It supports uh, Ben from Moto Camp Nerd doing the thing. Uh, yes. Yeah. Why does everybody say Africa Twin Adventure Sport? Am I saying it wrong? <sighs> if you want expensive hotel room, try a Disney Star Cruiser. Oh, God. Six grand for two nights. <sighs> oh, my God. Got to go chaperone a prom. Oh, bye, Mark. Thank you for being here. You're probably gone already. <laughs> oh, see, Rose, thank you so much for the super chat. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Congrats on 30K. Have a drink on me. Also, it's my B day today. So have another. Oh my gosh, everybody say happy birthday to see, Rose. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers, man. Yeah, that's awesome. So cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, where was I? Tourmaster Winter Elites are great cold weather gloves. Yeah, Tourmaster makes good gear. That was my first riding suit was the Tourmaster. That's why I did the pilgrimage on. I lived in that gear. <laughs> Fly racing snowmobile gloves. Yeah, snowmobile gloves for the win. <sighs> Atlas is electronic suspension versus manual adjust. Or, or the, the adventure twin. I, okay. A A adventure twin? Wow. Africa twin adventure sport has electronic suspension versus the manual adjust. Have had my heart set on a T7 for a while, but they're pretty unobtainable, so I'd settle for AT if I had to. Oh yeah, Justin, I see you. <laughs> I think even with heated gear, I would be a punk when <laughs> a punk when the weather drops. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Like, <laughs> it's definitely type two kind of fun, where it's just mostly a supper fest while it's happening and then it's fun to tell people about it afterwards <laughs> i love your scorpion helmet can you do a re review on it sometime um there is currently a review on the at950 already up on the channel but i will totally make a review of the gt930 uh probably this winter <laughs> still sipping on montgomery distillery whiskey from rocky mountain roll that's awesome yes montgomery distillery for the win <laughs> Montana people take cold weather clothes no matter what. Yes, a hundred percent. Justin knows what's what, what's going on. You should put out a zine of all the drawings you sketched up on the road. I love whenever they show up in your vids. Oh, thank you so much. I really only drew like twice on this trip. I think I drew at the Waco Mammoth National Monument and then um, when I got to the Gila cl Cliff Dwellings in New Mexico. That was really cool. I spent like two hours up there. And the only reason I came down was because you're not allowed to bring food up there. And, you know, I have to maintain my blood sugar levels. So I had to go down. But I would have stayed up there until they closed because it was just so cool. And, like, the longer that you stare at those, like, cliff dwellings, like, the more that you notice. It's, yeah, it's super cool. Anytime you go 
long distance, gotta be prepared for all types of weather. High altitude gets cold, for sure. When I left Michigan on March 11th, it was snowing with 15 degree temps. It was cold ride to Florida. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> Montana people know that it could still snow on you in July. For Yeah. It hasn't done it in a while, but for yes. A lot of women bloggers, but you're still the queen. Oh, thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. I am unfortunately economically unable to follow my dreams and do the thing right now, so I live vicariously through videos like yours. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Terry. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm glad that I could help just a little bit. <laughs> Hi, John. It's okay that you're late. You're here now, and that's what matters. Do you like your tent? Does it ever leak? I'm in the market for a new tent. Thanks, from Mark. I um, love, love, love my Big Agnes Copper Spur. I have the HV UL2 bike packing edition, so the poles are very short, which means the tent itself packs up very small. I I love it very, very much. Um, I, I don't... Uh, the only only leaks I've experienced is just like from water sitting underneath of the bathtub and kind of just seeping through the material and that's not the fault of my tent. Um, literally any tent bathtub, like if you set up in a place where water can pool underneath of your tent, uh, if the water is there for long enough, it will seep through the material. However, on this trip, I did re-waterproof my tent um, with Nick, Nick Wax um, waterproof spray. Um, I didn't, I was fortunate enough not to experience a lot of rain on this trip. I got rained on in Houston, um, Texas, uh, just in, in the tent. It didn't rain on me riding in, thankfully. And it wasn't raining when I was setting up my tent, um, but it poured in the middle of the night. But I think that I set up my tent in a place where like the rain wasn't like the, wasn't able to pool underneath my tent. So it wasn't a problem. Um, it also rained on me uh, in the panhandle of Florida, but I wasn't camping at that point. I got a hotel room because I knew that it was supposed to storm really bad that night, thanks to my mom watching the weather for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, like the tent only really had to go through like one little rainstorm in Texas this trip. Um, I had no problems, but uh, any tent that you have, you should re-waterproof it after two to three years um, because that uh, coating on the outside of the material will wear away um, and it's just good uh, a good way to make your gear last longer and I bought that tent when I was still working at REI um, and I think it, I got like a 20 or 30 percent discount on it but it was still ended up being like a $400 tent so I did pay money for that tent and I still stand behind it and I still say that it was worth every penny and I would have bought it at full price um, definitely, for sure. I had planned to buy it at full price before I started working at REI. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, highly recommend. Um, Big Agnes makes incredible tents. And if you can get a bike packing tent with the shorter poles, like it's life changing. Um, and like the HB uh, means high volume, which means that it has much more like head space. Uh, so yeah, I really love the copper spur. I think the black tail is very similar to my copper spur tent. Um, the tiger wall is a little bit different. It doesn't have as much headroom inside as the copper spur does, but yeah, they, big Agnes makes awesome tents. <laughs> the tent that I'm in right now isn't actually my big Agnes tent. This is my MSR tent that I pretty much only use for live streams now. <laughs> when writing the ATDCT, remember that left grip level is not a clutch. That was the only issue I had with my demo rut. <laughs> yes, I, I did know that, Zerny. Thank you for the heads up, though. I appreciate it. Been on enough long trips to understand. Yeah. You mean the Scorpio Amanda, aka Grumpy? David, I feel attacked. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to a certain extent, like it doesn't make, it doesn't take a whole lot to make me happy, but it also doesn't take a whole lot to make me mad or upset either. And uh, when you're meeting me for the first time, I try to make sure that people get like the better impression of me. And uh, post a writing day, I'm normally grumpy and that's not a good, that's not a good first impression. <laughs> Amanda's grandma also taught her to layer always. Yeah, for sure. Grandma Nett coming in clutch all of the layers, all of the time. 
Have you considered doing editing classes online? Charging, of course. Oh, uh, John, thank you for thinking that my editing is fancy enough to charge for. That's very kind of you. Um, I mean, like teaching somebody else to edit the way that I do. I have edited for other creators and I do charge. They do, they do pay me. Um, uh, but I, I don't know if I would offer editing classes because I feel like so much of my style of editing is like doing the the uh, base cut and then like uh, going in deeper on different levels like sometimes I color correct and sometimes I don't um, depends on what the footage looks like uh, how much time I have to work on it but also like there's still like stuff that I'm learning that like I look up every once in a while um, and I think if you're going to teach somebody else how to edit you should have full mastery of the programs that you use and I'm not quite there yet <laughs> I look so buff. I look stuff up as I need it. Hi from New Zealand. In your opinion, how would you rate the condition in uh, US roads, not the highways? So like we're not talking about freeways. So uh, like l first let's define the different like level of roads, okay? We have freeways, which is the interstate, which is what I think most people think of as highways, but that is the interstate. That is what I call a freeway. There are like normally three to four lanes or like two lanes and like one direction going and the other direction going are normally separated. Um, uh, and then there's highways or what I call secondary highways, which are the roads that were there before the interstate got built. Um, and I ride a lot of those roads. And then there's like back roads, which are still paved, sometimes not, mostly paved. Um, and those are mostly like neighborhood roads or roads between farms and ranches and that kind of stuff um, that wouldn't normally have through, tra through traffic on them. And then of course there's like forest service roads, which I have learned the East Coast calls fire roads um, and just like a dirt, dirt road, that kind of stuff. So I would rate uh, the condition of the US's secondary roads, like secondary highways, the highways that were there before the interstate. I would, uh, it's hard to give the whole of U, the US like a blanket rating because secondary highways in Louisiana were rough. Like <laughs> they were rough. And so was Alabama's and Mississippi's. Um, <laughs> Cause the way that they patch the roads, like every couple feet, there's like a little bump. So on a motorcycle, it's like, uh, like it was not. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even talking about like the areas that there were potholes. I'm just talking about even like the roads that get like through traffic on the regular. That was, those were rough. <laughs> Texas was actually pretty good. Um, uh, yeah, I would say Texas was pretty good. Montana's are like, it depends on the area that you're in. Um, <laughs> 93 isn't actually that bad. Like, uh, 93 gets a bad rap, like, as the mo one of the most dangerous highways, but um, 93 in comparison to some of the eastern Montana highways is pretty good. Um, depends on the level of traffic and how many semis go on it. Um, there are obviously sections of Montana's highways that are really bad and very potholy, but, you know, <laughs> we get all the snow and Louisiana doesn't. <laughs> um, so... I guess like if we're saying like 10 is like a really good highway, like the pavement is nice and smooth. You don't have to worry about falling into a pothole, <laughs> like just going, there's no like extraneous bumps in the road, just like perfect pavement. And then zero is like pothole and like half of the road is dirt. And like, why did they even try to pave this road? That's zero, okay. Um, I think if I blanket statement the US, um, the U.S.'s roads are normally, like, highways. We're talking about secondary highways, not the interstate. Probably, like, a 7.5 out of 10. The, yeah, that, that's going to be my blanket statement. <laughs> Have you considered doing... Yeah, no, I answered that question. Yay! Hugs from Chris! Yay, get hugs from Chris. <laughs> yeah oh yes i love everybody saying happy birthday that was great i'm a little behind so i'm sorry i can't imagine the time it'll take to edit all the videos you have planned from this trip yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit it's gonna be a bit 
<laughs> Late, but better than never. Hi, Scrambler Stories. Congratulations on completing the trip and 30K subs. Hi. I'm so happy you guys are here. I'm so happy I got to see you at Forgotten Angels. If you guys are not subscribing to Scrambler Stories already, you should definitely do that. For sure, for sure. I don't trust out outer gear to be waterproof. Always go for a rain suit. Frog togs. Um, I had the Nelson rig suit for this trip and it was awesome. The one time that I had to use it, but it was awesome. <laughs> um, I can't remember the, it's like their newer, newer, newer version. I can't remember if it's like solar, solo storm rider or just like the storm rider suit. Maybe it's just storm rider, but it was, I was very happy to have that suit partially just like to have an outer rain layer um, so that the textile of my rabbit suit wouldn't get sopping wet and be extra cold, but also for like the um, the wind proof layer. Um, so you're just not getting as cold. Uh, I enjoy Shade Tree, but it, is he as exhausting as I would think he is? Can't imagine camping with him. Actually, camping with Shade Tree was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like, both on the level of, like, his energy level is so much higher than mine, like, out the roof higher than mine. But also, like, I genuinely thought that he was going to complain the whole time. Normally, people who say that they hate camping are nonstop complainers when you try to take them camping. So I was mentally prepared for that. But honestly, did not complain at all during the camping trip. And I, I'm very proud of how he did. He did very well for saying that he did not like camping. Um, watching him put up his tent, though, was very funny. <laughs> Just remember when the weather gets bad, Marines and infantry embrace the suck. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Uh, I remember when the weather gets bad that there are people hiking in that stuff, so. <laughs> I absolutely love the pilgrimage series. Hello, motivational. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm, I apologize for them not being the best videos, but I'm very glad that you enjoyed them. <laughs> yeah what do you think of uh gerbing heated gear i haven't tried gerbing um the only heated gear that i have really tried is the first geared uh wired stuff that wires into the bike and the mobile warming which is battery powered um i did not like the first gear heated gear um mostly because like the way that it's heated is just like wires running through it so you get hot spots anytime like you build an, bend an elbow and there's a wire here, you get a hot spot and you can develop a blister there. Um, I had a real problem because I had the heated pants. Um, the armor in my pants pressed against the heated gear on my knee and the hot wire that ran around that area. Like, I had legit blisters on my knees and it was not good. I also just don't like being plugged on the bike. So, <laughs> um, we did a, like a little seminar for mobile warming when I was still working at the dealership and I was like instantly sold at that point. I was like, yes, please take my money. <laughs> like I have one of their like puffy heated jackets. I have one of their like windproof heated jackets and then I have the heated base layer. The heated base layer is what I take on the motorcycle. Um, but on those, on mobile warming, the heat pads are like more like big band-aids kind of for, of heat instead of wires. And so it's like a big patch of heat. Um, and it's so it's spread over a bigger distance. So if you have something pressing against that pad, against your skin, you're not going to develop a blister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last time I was in Billings, it was 114. Thank God for Beartooth. Oh yeah. Billings gets stupid hot in the summertime. I don't know how Justin and Megan do it. Good gear cost. It's an investment. The Big Agnes Zero Bag was great. March Moto Menace. Yes. Oh, oh. I like. I took. Um. I took all the Exped gear on this trip. Um. So I took the Exped Comfort. Uh. I can't remember which degree it was. Um. It's closer to like a twenty degree bag in comparison to other sleeping bags. So I took the Exped Comfort. Um, for the smaller pack size and then the the new Exped sleeping mat um, that I posted about on Instagram. Absolutely love that mat. Mm, so good. Uh, I did miss the Big Agnes sleeping bag a little bit <laughs> just for the comfortability. Like it attaches all of the stuff that I talked about in the sleeping bag review video is why I missed that bag. Um, not that the Exped bag performed 
like worse is just like it's it's a mummy bag so it's much more compact um i'm i was still dealing with the fact that it doesn't attach to the sleeping pad so when i turned over i had to be very careful about not ending up with a zipper in my shoulder or anything like that um yeah we're topping off here but yeah that that big agnes um diamond park bag so good so good still still worth it I would still pay full price for that bag any day. Oh, bye, Lee! Thank you for being here! Oh, I guess we are rounding up on an hour, aren't we? <laughs> Before your first ever moto camping trip, have you ever gone backpacking? No, I have not gone backpacking. Um, I bought a backpacking backpack, like... After, after the pilgrimage, after all that stuff, I bought a backpacking backpack because I thought I was going to do this hike to like this ghost town in Oregon. I still haven't gone backpacking. <laughs> Is the left level for left lever, lever for rear brake like on a Vespa? Borrowed one once, kept locking up the rear, coming up to stops. Hmm. Uh, I don't think so. Or, I'm assuming that we're talking about the... Uh, the DCT. Big Agnes Salt Creek SL backpacking tent. Uh, this is the model I have. Oh, awesome. Excellent choice. Yes. I had a Walmart tent collapse on me from a storm. Fortunately, I wasn't in it. Took advantage of close by friends. Oof, ouch, John. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go. Had a long day. Bye, Bill. Thank you for being here. You're probably gone already, but thank you. Do I use Final Cut Pro or Premiere? I use Premiere Pro and After Effects. Like my maps and stuff that you guys see in the videos, those were made in After Effects and then I export them and import them into Premiere Pro. Um, I've been an Adobe lady my whole life. I have worked in DaVinci Resolve, which is why I can recommend it to people who don't want to pay for Adobe because the transition from Premiere to DaVinci Resolve is very similar because the workflow where things are at is all very, very similar. And DaVinci Resolve is free to get started and do all that kind of stuff. So I, re I recommend those kinds of programs like uh, Premiere and Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. I mean, obviously I'm biased towards Premiere, um, but like I recommend Premiere and DaVinci Resolve specifically um, for people even just starting out because you're going to have to go through that learning curve at some point no matter what. So you might as well start out the gate in it, get comfortable in the program while you also learn about how to format a video and that kind of stuff. Um, it's less work that you're going to have to do later because um, a lot of the times people who start in more um, stripped back programs have a really hard time then trying to transition their workflow to a different program later down the road when they need something else Oh, ding dong. Um, they have a harder time tr transitioning to a more robust program later down the road when they outgrow that simple strip back program. So I just recommend people start with DaVinci Resolve or Premiere or just like a more robust program from the get-go. Get it all out of the way. Like... <laughs> I have the reactive outdoor tent that can open in three seconds. Wow. How big is that packed up, Donna? <laughs> Thanks to you re-waterproofing my tent and bug sprayed my tent and pants and jacket. Thanks for the pre-trip video. I am very happy that I could assist. <laughs> you can use the, the Quentin Crisp method of teaching. Just stay one lesson ahead of your students. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's one way to do it, right? My two cents on teaching. A teacher who is still learning and admits it is a gift um, and the best way to learn is to teach. No pressure in those statements, though. Just another perspective. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate your perspective always. Interstate riding on the bike sucks. I mean, if you got to get somewhere, you got to get somewhere, you know? I'm not saying that riding the interstate is pleasant by any means, but... It's there for a reason. When you got to get somewhere, you got to get there. Uh, glad you skipped New Orleans then. It's like off-roading everywhere. <laughs> California, sixth largest economy in the world, 49th in the U.S. for road quality. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, Darren, for the super chat. Amanda, I look forward to your content always. Welcome home and cheers. Thank you so much, Darren. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Hmm. Let's see, where was I? Indian, Indiana's roads are like a battle zone. Yeah, like riding through Indiana was rough. <laughs> I have three Africa twins at my local dealership. I don't know how tall you are, but they are very tall bikes and I could barely touch the ground. Yes, Dave. I know how tall the Africa twin is. Um, it also depends on the seat that they have on it and that kind of stuff. Um, I got to ride Mark. Um, uh, oh my gosh, I just forgot his channel name. I'm sorry, Mark, if you're watching this, but oh God, I'm sorry. Um, Age of Exploring, ha ha ha. I got to ride Age of Exploring's Africa Twin, but he did have the tall seat and that kind of stuff, and I still rode it just fine. Um, but riding big bikes is not prohibitive. You just learn different techniques to riding them. And especially, like, I got to ride the, uh, the Super Sport that I borrowed uh, while I was in LA with Honda was the one with the low seat. And, like, yeah, I only one-footed it on one side, but it was totally manageable, and at no point did I feel like it was unmanageable if that makes sense <laughs> hi robert greetings from australia hello i am an add fan but i don't roll on my scooter <laughs> i don't roll on one my scooter it's a gl 1500 so the slabs are my friend yeah for sure shout out all the way from south africa that's super cool hi <laughs> I was going to be patient and watch the episodes, but I'm not good at that. Did you go through Panama City Beach? It would have been Highway 98 in the Florida Panhandle. I don't think that I went through Panama City Beach. I went through Pascagoula and uh, Pensacola uh, and like the Gulf, the Gulf Shore Islands. I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't think that I went through Panama City Beach, or at the very minimum, I didn't stop there. <laughs> Harley Dave most folks need to just put on one foot down on the ADV but thank you Nathan for s s yeah sneaking in there and spreading the good word <laughs> I'm a new sub just started writing today any pro first tips oh that is a Chris question Chris and Nathan are much better at handing out the tips um, for new writers for sure uh, <laughs> I'm one of those people who, like, you you think that you would know all the things that you would tell a new writer, but I I feel like there's a lot of things that I take for granted um, and just assume that everybody knows about having ridden for, like, I wouldn't say, like, so long. I'm not going to say that. Um, but it's been long enough since I had to learn to ride that a lot of the stuff that I probably would have told a new writer I have forgotten about, and I just, like, kind of you just do that now. Like, so it's difficult to convey in words, like what you're doing to a new writer. And Chris and Nathan from For the Love of Knobs do a amazing job at conveying that information because they're just wonderful human beings in general, but much better teachers than I. The Aero Stitch is waterproof. Yes, I do have an Aero Stitch too, David, but I just like other suits more. They're more comfortable. I, oh, Ashfa, I still have the Aero Stitch suit. Yes. Um, I pretty much only wear the Aero Stitch suit in the middle of winter in Portland and um, only for day rides. And that's because when I did the, I think it was April, April 2018, I rode the Aero Stitch, I rode in the Aero Stitch suit from Portland, Oregon to Montana and back. It was like below freezing temperatures most of the time um, and that kind of stuff but I ended up with like some pretty bad bruising on my shoulders from the weight of the suit just like sitting on me um weird and my suit doesn't have the liner that comes with a lot of the other suits because I won it in a photo contest so they just gave me the shell and the armor um I want to do a little project um this winter where I take uh d3o armor and glue uh, Velcro to it so I can replace the bulky foam armor from Aerostitch with like some D3O and do a little experiment to see if that fixes my bruising problem <laughs> or not. <laughs> Philip, thank you so much for the super chat. My Gerbing jacket liner is wonderfully warm. Oh, I'm super glad. Like, 
Hidagir for the win. Like, can we just all cheers to Hidagir? Because, yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh, I lost my spot. <laughs> okay, there I am. Okay. Camping, turning up at the Hilton without a reservation. <laughs> Are you going to do California trip? Brian, if that's a question for me, I have spent a lot of time in California. I don't, I don't think that I need to do that. <laughs> I am changing from leathers and a textile high vis to HWK pants and jacket. We'll see how it goes this season. Falcro, I wish you the best. I hope that it all works out and it does everything that you need it to. I would still carry um, good rain layers. <laughs> Was it hard putting in a lot of miles on the Suzuki? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about Lazarus, my 1980 Suzuki GSA 50. Um, it is harder on her to do big mile days because of the handlebars. <laughs> I think if I switch the handlebars to more of the style that are on the CB Fighter X, I would have less of an issue. Um, actually, I think it would be easier to put bigger mile days on Lazarus than the CB, just because like the 850, the power delivery is nice and smooth. I am never left wanting for power, even though it is carbureted. Like at no point was I afraid that I wasn't going to make it around a semi or something like that. Um, on the CB 500X, you do need to plan specifically if you're going to pass somebody, you you make a plan and you get a running distance so that like there's nice there's a nice goodly amount of space for you to get up and around him um on lazarus like i never had to like plan that far in advance like be like oh it's clear i'm just gonna go um so if i change the handlebars on lazarus then it would be fine the problem with the current handlebars is that they're the originals and <laughs> on 80s motorcycles they're like this and they come back towards you so your wrists are kind of like at an at an angle like that while you're riding so when you're twisting the throttle like it's like a whole arm thing and it, like messes with the shoulder up here and then also your wrist is just all kinds of funky so i don't think that i could put like more than 100 miles a day on lazarus on this point like post post wrist breakage as well um just because that would put way too much stress on my wrist and uh let me tell you the Atlas Throttle Lock was like life changing on this trip. At no point did I have to take breaks just for my wrist because the Throttle Lock let me take the pressure off of my wrist for like big chunks of time on like going straight down the road. It was amazing. <laughs> anyway, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> I've never had heated gear before. Let me tell you, Donna. If you can afford it and you get it, it will be life-changing. It totally changes the game, for sure. Um, obviously, it's still very important to carry layers because, like, and be able to layer properly, but heated gear is just like icing on the cake, and it takes a day from being absolutely miserable to bearable. <laughs> and then sometimes just enjoyable in general, depending, depending on the temperature. Love the Pilgrimage series. Proved you didn't need an adventure bike to go on an adventure, for sure. Um, miles are easy and uncomfortable on the Valkyrie. <laughs> Good for you, Robert. How we do it. Have you seen the pictures with the big cooler strapped to my bike for a backrest? Let's just say that it ain't full of hot cocoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never use my heated gear. Layers, heated grips. If I need any more, it's probably below 35 and I don't want to ride on ice anymore. I mean, that sounds like you were a very warm person and I'm very happy for you. I am not a warm person. <laughs> Random thought, I never knew what John Denver meant in his song, He Was Born in the Bitterroot Valley, until your previous trip when you had that leg with your brother. Yeah. Did you guys not know? I grew up in the Bitterroot Valley. Do you... <laughs> uh, where Rocky Mountain Roll happens, that is the Bitterroot Valley. <laughs> Here in Queensland, Australia, it does not really get cold enough for heated gear. That makes sense. <laughs> Cooling gear, on the other hand, yeah, I can only imagine. That's probably pretty important. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Oh, Mark is back. Looking forward to Rocky Mountain Roll. Thank you, Age of Exploring. Cheers. I can't wait to see you again. I'm so stoked. 
Oh my god, Barbara is here! Oh! Hi, Barbara! Everybody say hello to Barbara. She went to, to college with me. She was like the only other Montanan at an art school in Portland, Oregon. And we bonded so fast because she's incredible. I love you, Barbara. Thank you for being here on the stream. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Saddle Tramp is here. Hi. It was lovely to meet you at Forgotten Angels. Oh, the Weirdo Camp Out is an excellent description. <laughs> Is that pizza knocking? No, I don't I don't think that that was pizza. It was probably like a package or something. Let's see. Uh, you are in a tent? I'm in my living room. This tent is my backdrop. <laughs> Glad to hear you made it home safe. And thanks again for giving me tips for keeping warm during cold weather riding. Still hunting for merino wool sweater. Definitely check check those like uh, uh, secondhand websites like Poshmark, um, uh, Depop. There's a bunch of different ones. Um, like secondhand merino wool is like the jam. Because like full price merino wool is expensive. I mean like I would still pay for it and I have bought a couple of new pieces of merino wool. But for the most part, all of my merino wool and like the cashmere and stuff is secondhand. Um, don't forget to give Amanda some likes on this live chat. Oh, thank you, Darren. <laughs> Ozark Trails tent's fine for shade at the beach, but terrible in heavy wind and rain. Yeah, don't I know it. <laughs> agreed. We are agreed. We were all born in hospital. This is true. Is that pizza knocking? No, I, I read that one. No, it was not pizza, unfortunately. That would be cool. I, would, I could go for some pizza right now. <laughs> Left lover on a DCT is the parking brake. Yes. Yeah. How much do you love your new hat? Um, uh, for the record, for those who missed my explanation earlier, this is my old hat. Not. I had two Stetsons before the trip. I had a Montana Stetson and a Las Vegas Stetson, which is this one. I bought this at AIM Expo in February. Um, I lost my Montana Stetson. I, of course, love my Las Vegas Stetson. Um, this is the, the Bailey's and it is, uh, it's seen better days. It's a little, it's a little warped. Um, <laughs> I still love it because it came from Tombstone and I absolutely love Tombstone, Arizona. Like that, uh, I had to go back to that town. It just spoke to me and I love my hat band. Like I had them cut off the original hat band and I bought this hat band separate and I love this very, very much. Um, this hat needs some love and attention. Let's just say that after this trip, like, whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Stetson, if you're watching this, I would, I would be very, very down to be sponsored by Stetson. Uh, especially after this trip. Like, I know that I, I made this comment on Instagram. Like, my trip wasn't totally all about my hat, but... It, it was close. <laughs> Welcome back. Sorry if you were already asked. Are you doing the Alley Sweeper next Saturday? Uh, I didn't even know the Alley Sweeper was next Saturday. Thank you, Tons of Bees, for informing me. <laughs> I've kind of been out of the loop for about a month. So um, I, don't, I don't know if I'll be doing the Alley Sweeper. Probably not. Um, but I will be at the One Moto Show. So if you're going to the One Moto Show, I will be there. Please come say hi. I will be restocked on stickers, so you will get a sticker if you come say hi to me at the One Moto Show in Portland, Oregon. Uh, hello, why was Indiana rough? Um, Indiana was rough for me because uh, most of my experience of Indiana was in very populated areas. And I grew up in a rural area. And even the traffic here in Portland isn't as bad as the traffic in urban areas in, on the East Coast. That's why it was rough. And also, like, a lot of the roads that I rode in Indiana were, like, concrete that had potholes in them. <laughs> it was not, yeah, yeah. Riding the Valkyrie is awesome, even if it is 340 kilograms. <laughs> yes, I mean, like, not to, yes, I am quoting Shade Tree Surgeon. I like bike. Bike is fun. <laughs> Cheers from Canada. Any tips for, oh, yes, I read that one. Yes, 
did you meet any crazy squirrels in Pascagoula? I did not. Um, no, my only run-in with animal life on this trip was, uh, I mean, of course, like a couple of deer ran out in front of me. That's just normal. That's par for course at this point. No, my only encounter with wildlife on this trip was a raccoon stole my granola in Louisiana. <laughs> the one time, the one time that I did not put my food all the way away. Yep. <laughs> Tip number one, remember to put the kickstand up before pulling away. I feel like tip number one should be, remember to put the kickstand down before you put the bike down. <laughs> I will have to get on the Buell this year. Yes, yeah. Favorite new rider tips, take lessons, hang out with patient people and have fun. From Chris, I quote Chris. Chris Vanch, my wonderful, like amazing human being friend who is also my hero, she's incredible. Um, favorite new writer tip, take lessons, 100% backed by me. Uh, hang out with patient people, definitely, De yes. See, this is why, this is why Chris gives the tips. <laughs> Love the yellow shirt, you ever heard of the Wiggles? Yes, I have. This is for exposure, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, exposure of the camera, not exposure on socials, yeah. I also rode across the country on a Honda 500cc, only I did it on the new Rebel back in 2018. Respect, Matthew. I hope that you had a good time. Aristich tried to fit me on site. Too many adjustments required. Oh, I feel that pain. <laughs> My favorite new rider tip, the classes are worth the expense. 100%, yes. Good gear rocks. Yeah, dep <laughs> depends on who the teachers are. That's true. Like, it's hard if you go in a situation and the teacher doesn't uh, convey information the way that you learn. That's kind of rough. But, um, but yeah, like, doing the Pat Jacks class, like, the Women ADV class was amazing. And it was, like, wonderful, like, in two parts to, like, be reinforce the things that I was already doing correct, um, which I thought that were bad habits. So that's awesome. I'm very, very happy to like have somebody else like watch the way that I'm writing and reinforce things that I'm already doing good so that I feel confident in doing those things. Um, and second, like doing, uh, I, have, I got so much more comfortable at doing circles on the bike, which transfers to, to being able to do a U-turn in a tight space. Um, and that was only possible because of pet jacks. Um, she also, uh, didn't know that she was doing this, but she made me realize that, uh, my clutch needed to be adjusted really badly. And it's only when you're doing some of those drills that you realize different parts of your bike really, really need attention because like there's little tweak, like little ticks and tweaks on a bike that you just kind of get accustomed to like little quirks. Um, and you kind of get accustomed to it and you don't think that it, there's anything wrong with it until you're asked to do certain kinds of maneuvers or um, uh, drills on the motorcycle when you're like, oh, wow. I don't think my clutch is totally disengaging the way that it's supposed to. <laughs> um, but yeah, teach like finding a teacher that speaks to you and understands your learning style and can, can convey that information to you is so valuable and absolutely worth it. <laughs> I want a gyroscope mounted aquarium on my handlebars to give therapy rides to goldfish of the wealthy. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Cruise control or throttle locks are uh, indispensable for long trips. Much easier to slog through some miles when you need to. For sure. Yes. A hundred percent. I agree with that. Is that a kitty cat I see in the right top corner? Yes. Um, Calamity, I think, has been making her a presence known here for a little bit. <laughs> Amanda, keep the arrow stitch. Oh, oh, keep the arrow stitch in case you ever buy a BMW. They will shun you otherwise. <laughs> I don't know if I would ever be able to afford a BMW. <laughs> Or I definitely can't right now. Um, I will never get rid of the arrow stitch. Like, it's not something that I'm going to sell. It's just a matter of, like, 
trying to different things to modify it to make it so it's more usable for me like more of the year than just during the height of winter in the and the Pacific Northwest um uh it's still a really great piece of gear I'm not like smashing on them it's just like little things that I have to fix for it to adjust to me that's really it and maybe eventually I'll be able to afford a liner for it so it'll be more comfortable <laughs> oh thank you Martin looking forward to the videos thank you I'm very stoked Really looking forward to meeting Age of Exploring at Rocky Mountain World this year. Yeah, Mark is awesome. I absolutely loved my old army wool sweater. That thing, like that sounds like it could, it would last forever. You need a small TV with a fire video playing. <laughs> I will take note for future live streams. <laughs> is that the hat that the butlers fixed? Yes, the, the one with the warped brim is the one that um butlers hatters and temple tried to fix and uh, to be fair when he gave it back to me this part hadn't quite warped this way um but unfortunately um because of the time constraints um the stiffener hadn't totally dried when he had to give it back to me um so uh the way that i have to strap the hat to the bike to make sure that it doesn't fly away um, meant that a strap came over here and that's why this part is like much more like this and this part kind of like goes like this a lot and I, it's just from me playing with it that it's become a little bit more flat but like I said at the beginning I think if I just put some weights on it it'll go back to the shape that it needs to be and worst case I can like steam iron it to try to flatten the brim out again um, but I'm still in the process of trying to get it to fit my head again and that's just a matter of like wetting the felt and putting it back on until it stretches out I have a dark brown felt Stetson. Don't wear it enough. Might be too hot for Big Bend. Oh no, I would totally take it to Big Bend. Like, try like hats are very very important when you're in the desert. Like, keeping the the sun off your face. Like, even if you're wearing sunscreen, the sun there is like very 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 intense. So, having a hat that's going to block the sun from your face is very important. Um, like I had, I had sunscreen on my hands and they burned a ton. Like you, of course, it's not going to show up on camera very well, but my hands are very, very dark. The rest of my skin is very, very white. <laughs> and that, like that was with sunscreen on and my hands were bright red by the end of, uh, riding through Big Bend. Um, not like I was wearing my gloves, but like the couple of times that I dropped the bike, um, on Old Ore Road, like I had took my gloves off and just from that time, of like unloading the bike and picking the bike up. My hands burned. What type of hat was your Montana Stetson? I had, oh God, I think it is the the outdoor Gallatin helmet, like in Sage. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what I had. Like it is, it's still it's still a felt hat. It's still 100% wool. Um, and that's why I got the Bailey's because it was also 100% wool and uh, crushable. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure the model of the Montana Stetson was the Gallatin. Ugh, don't quote me. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. The Valkyrie is basically a stripped down gold wing. Same 1800cc engine, yeah. I have a Stetson flat cap and would be broke, broken if I lost it. Thank you for understanding how I felt when I lost my Montana Stetson. I was devastated. Like, I, I like took a break from social media for like three days. I was very upset. I'm sure you will witness it in like the first episode of the series, like is when I lost, uh, will be covering when I lost my sets and I was so, so sad. God, I watch out for those shady raccoons. <laughs> yes, for real. Nice to see you again from Northern New York. Enjoy following your channel. Stay safe. Thank you, Carson. I appreciate you. Indiana doesn't have potholes. It has paved sections of bumps. <laughs> I would love to train with Pat Jacks from Nancy. Dude, yes, it was it was super good. Potholes in Philadelphia are like Grand Canyon, are like the Grand Canyon. You need an adventure bike or a good mechanic. <laughs> Where do you put the hat box on the bike? I don't have a hat box. That's why the bike looks like that's, I don't have a hat box. That's why my brim looks so funky because the straps kind of like go like this. 
I just strap it on the top of my duffel. And so the, the straps that hold the duffel on hold it down. That's not how I used to do it. I used to just use the straps that closed the duffel, not necessarily holding the duffel to the bike. So there wasn't as much pressure on the brim. But I think that's why I lost the Montana Stetson because the crosswinds in Southern California just like kind of wiggled it out from the straps and ripped it off the bike. Um, and that was, of course, the one time, the one time that I didn't also clip the hat band. So normally I like I put the hat on the duffel and then I put the straps on that hold the duffel closed, not the ones that hold the duffel on the bike. And then I have a little carabiner that I clip the hat band to um, that's attached to the duffel. So even if it works its way out of, from the straps, the, the, um, uh, the hat band is sewed onto the hat. And so the carabiner on the hat band would still hold the hat onto the bike. And then I would have seen it flapping and it was stopped and restrapped it down. But uh, that first day, uh, I was distracted and I didn't clip the hat band on like I normally do. And I only put the straps on the side of the brim and the crosswinds in Southern California ripped it off the bike. I'm, I'm still very sad about it. <laughs> Currently making homemade pizza in a wood-fired stove. Roland, excuse me, I would like some. <laughs> FedEx just dropped off a, a Ravel box during the live streams. How could this day get any better? <laughs> awesome. Amanda needs an electronic fake campfire. <laughs> okay, I hear you guys. There will be a, a TV in the back of the thing with a campfire on it next time. I promise. I, mean, I don't promise, but it'll be a goal. A friend who owns a BMW just offered me an AeroStitch suit for a short month. <laughs> Dude, Scott, grab that up. AeroStitch suits are expensive. I'm so glad that I won mine, like, in a photo contest. I didn't have to pay for it. Really okay about the hat, Amanda. Thanks. I have a different lightweight hat from REI I will take. <laughs> I was further back in the live stream, but hi again, Barbara. <laughs> I love this. I love it so much. I had a black Stetson. It was called The Preacher. Only one I ever saw. Cannot find another. If I ever find the one who has it, they will need a preacher. <laughs> Patrick lives in Grand Junction, Colorado, and I live in Northeast Colorado. I promise I will contact her this weekend. Wonderful. Yeah, I get it. Oh, I think I've caught up on the chat. Yeah, I'm still thinking the lost Stetson will be found. Maybe post to a Facebook group in that area or Craigslist lost with a reward. The problem is um, that I never thought that I would lose that hat. So it doesn't actually have my name in it. So... Uh, I think if anybody does find it, they'll just be like, how, how would they even know that it's mine? They, there's no way for them to know that it's mine. Um, it's somewhere south of Sonora on like a little secondary highway. And uh, I think that I was, uh, I think there's ranch land on both sides of that road. So my hope is that the wind picked it up and threw it somewhere in that ranch land. And that when the, the cowboy or rancher goes and does their rounds they'll find it and it'll find a new home and that the rancher will use it and that is the only thing keeping me sane right now is thinking that a rancher will find my hat and be able to get good use out of it or give it to their daughter or give it to their son or something <laughs> what time is it over there it's 11 30 a.m sunday here from robert it is 6 27 p.m in portland oregon that is pacific time does that make uh, does that make from the future? Yeah, yes. Those hat snatching crosswinds. Yeah, for real. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like hat snatching, satellite messenger snatching. Like wow, wow, wow. Um, if you guys weren't following the Instagram stories, and in, when I got to Texas, like after I did Big Bend, thankfully. Oh my gosh. Thankfully, after I did Big Bend and I was crossing the rest of West Texas uh, towards Houston, um, a gnarly crosswind uh, opened up a little bag that I, I kind of clipped on the back of my bike. It's just a little Osprey bag. It's like three liters. And I just clipped it onto a D-ring on the duffel. And I just like had a bunch of stuff that I was like using interchangeably while I was at stops. And I didn't want to have to unroll like the roll top bags in order to get at it. 
So I just like had this little Osprey bag clipped on my duffel bag and uh, <sighs> look, the crosswind opened the bag, opened the clip and dumped all of my stuff all over the road behind me. And by the time that I noticed, I had this big truck, like not, not a semi truck, but like, uh, I think it was a Cummins or something like that. Uh, and it, he was pulling a fifth wheel and he was riding, he was driving way too close to me. So when the bag opened up and dumped all the contents of the bag all over the road behind me, even if that stuff survived contact with the pavement going 75 miles per hour, he ran over most of it, like half of it including my satellite messenger <sighs> and i have i have been using the somewhere satellite messenger s-o-m-e-w-e-a-r uh, for like the last year and a half and i wanted to get a good long use out of it before i talk to you guys about it because i've really been enjoying it but i wanted an extended use um to be able i put it put it through all kinds of different situations so i'd be able to like talk to you about how it is using it um, they have been out of stock for like the last nine months and uh, and the truck ran over it so it's not it's not replaceable right now you can't buy them anywhere right now they've been out of stock for an age and even after reaching out to somewhere and onyx because onyx sent me one because they were doing a collab with onyx that's why I got one and uh, they're like yeah no we don't we wouldn't even know when we would be able to replace it because like they're having so many stock issues right now and it's just devastating. <laughs> like I still have my Garmin in reach SE and I will probably restart the plan on that um, until I can replace this somewhere. But dang, you guys, it was devastating. I also lost a camera charger, a couple of camera batteries, um, one of like two of my heated gear batteries. One of them, cause there was three heated gear batteries in that bag. One of them survived actually, I'm so surprised. Um, but the other two did not. Um, my I've been using, I've been borrowing a pair of glasses from my mom that is a similar prescription that I need to get here soon, but I wasn't able to make an appointment before I left. So I borrowed my mom's extra pair of glasses for this trip for when I needed them. And uh, those survived. I have no idea how they survived, but they did. Like they were in a case, but like, wow. Um, yeah. And oh, and my, my stickers were in that bag too. The stickers survived, obviously, because I gave them out at Forgotten Angels, but... <sighs> Those crosswinds, man, just wow. The first, the first like week or two of this cross country trip were rough. They were rough. <laughs> I like Stetson, my dad always wore them. Yeah, did you ever get the sand out of your tent? Paul, there is still sand in my tent. I think I camped in the, I, I, a tent camped, like I wanna say, two or three more times after I tried to set it up at Monahan's, And like, I did get most of it out when I camped in Carl at, at Carlsbad, but um, but like when I set it up in near Gila, there was still sand in it. And I tried my best to dump it out. It's just like, it's one of those things where I'm gonna have to like use a washcloth and just essentially wash the whole tent. I'll probably just put it, I'll probably just wash it in the bathtub, to be honest, because it's filthy. And my rainfly has like sap from the trees at Forgotten Angels, so I need to wash it again. Um, yeah. I had a Tilly, liked it, but it never fit too tight. Would love to get another one. Nancy, if the Tilly is felt or like made of wool, you can actually, you can wet the felt on the inside of your sweatband and stretch it out, but I don't know what, what, it, what your Tilly was made out of. I am from the future, the sun deed and did rise on Sunday morning. Oh good, thank you, Robert. <laughs> Caitlin here, I am so nervous for the winds going west. I try not to freak out with the truck winds on the highway. I feel that. Caitlin, hopefully when you guys have this direction, the spring winds will have calmed down a little bit, but there's no stopping the winds in Southern California. That's an all year thing, it's, it's rough. Um, Any time that you see the big wind turbines, you know they get wind all year. <laughs> Any mental tricks to get through them? Any Oh, through the winds. Um, uh, stop often, like when you need to, and like so that you can like go into a building so that you can give your ears a break. Because like, I think besides like just like the stress of like keeping your bike like going straight down the road, 
is rough in itself, but like one of the biggest fatigues for me riding through the wind is actually the increased noise in my helmet. Even with earplugs in, even with headphones in, listening to audiobooks, the wind noise is intense no matter what you do. So being able to stop um, often, definitely at least once an hour. This is my personal opinion. I know that everybody does stuff differently, but personally, like stopping once an hour, getting inside somewhere, and taking like t like a, like minimum 15 minutes to 30 minutes to just like let your brain have a break from the wind noise because that is way more fatiguing than I think people give it credit for. Um, that's really important. And also like if it if it's gusts that's going to pull your head, I just hold my helmet to be totally honest so that my neck isn't straining trying to hold my head up. <laughs> I lost $100 worth of batteries for my helmet camera. Ouch. Oh, God. Any rabbits in the hat? Nope. Sorry. Cargo nets are your friend. I see. I don't have great experience with cargo nets. It would probably be fine, like, to put over a hat that's already strapped to the bike in a different way, but I wouldn't rely on the cargo net to just hold my stuff to the bike. I've, I've lost way too much stuff thinking that the cargo net was going to hold it to my bike, and it did not. Lost a knife my fiance gave me when we first started riding, first started dating. Oh God, I'm so sorry. Last September, my brother and I were barreling west on I-40 in New Mexico and I lost my prescription sunglasses. The case was tucked in the cargo net on my tail bag. Crap. Ah, see, e example, do not rely on cargo nets. Just don't. <laughs> My friend's phone and wallet fell out of his pocket while he were riding on the freeway. Oh my God, that is awful. Oh, I rode east to PCH from Death Valley through the wind. It was super impressive and relentless from dawn till late night. I had to pull old weather report to convince pals I wasn't exaggerating. Yeah. <laughs> Tilly is a fabric hat. Okay, cool. You should be able to kind of like wet it and see if it'll stretch out. Um, we had the Chinook winds in Boulder. Yeah. The, uh, central Montana has the Chinook winds as well. It's gnarly. Was Forgotten Angels everything you thought it would be? <laughs> Forgotten Angels was absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. Like Rocky Mountain Roll is as 180 from Forgotten Angels as you can get, I think, in my personal opinion. <laughs> like... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Heavy wind literally beats on you and causes fatigue for real, real. What ear protection are you using these days? Um, oh God, I forgot. I can't remember the brand of earplugs that I got, but they're essentially the same thing as the Eargasm earplugs. I think they were just a little bit cheaper. It's just like, a, it's a copy. So they're earplugs and they have like that tiny little hole through the middle of the earplugs so you can hear your music better, but it's still blocking out the high pitch of the wind. Um, and then I also use, um, these in-ear headphones that are wired that like have a similar shape as the Eargasm earplugs do where it has like a little flangey and like two little flanges. So it still does a really good job of blocking out the wind noise. And that way I can listen to audiobooks um, because I still haven't found a comm system that is loud enough that I can hear my audiobooks. Um, with like, I'm still, obviously I'm wearing earplugs, you guys, but like you can listen to music totally fine, both on the Exocom and the HD speakers with Sina. Um, even the standard speakers on Sina, I didn't have an issue listening to music. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I haven't been able to find good speakers that I can like listen to audiobooks without having to wear wired headphones. Um, it's not a big deal because with the wired headphones, it's like still blocking out the major wind noise and I'm not like listening to such a high decibel that it's going to give me uh, ear damage. But um, yeah, that's what I do now. Wind is one reason I left Kansas. A trip to Colorado two years ago, road leaned about 20 degrees to keep going straight. Ugh, ugh. All I can tuck in the cargo net are my sandals and a tightly rolled hat. <laughs> Glasses case is way too tiny to keep in a cargo net. <laughs> Just wondering, have you, uh, are you considering an Alaskan ride? Um, Alaska would be super, super rad. However, I would want to do it with my brother and we have to do very specific things to get him to Alaska. So 
uh, it's either like a ferry ride to Alaska, which is really, really expensive, or waiting and saving enough money to rent bikes and just fly to Alaska. Um, Because the ferry ride, or at least this is the research that I did recently, the ferry ride for one motorcycle is $2,500. Ouch. (laughs) And that's just to get you and your bike to Alaska. Ah, rough. Rough. Um, Anyway, um, it would be cool. I would like to do it, but it's probably not in the immediate future. Kansas wind in August would not be so bad if they would shut off those big fans in the fields. <laughs> Drop my key fob on the way to Forgotten Angels. Found it in the bottom of my rain suit pants. In the leg. Well, I'm glad that you found it, Paul. <laughs> I got those earplugs listening to ACDC. Yeah. Tampa Bay Bridge is fun with the wind. Some days there are warnings up and limit traffic. Yeah. Ouch. Ouch is what I say. Ouch. 2500 to Juneau or Anchorage. Um, I don't... The the ferry that I was looking at, it, like, the difference between town stops was very, very minimal. Like, less than $100 difference between which town you stopped at. Um, yeah, ferry is out. Lots of rentals here. Couple companies, riders share, etc. Yeah, I'm just, like... The more research I do about it, the more that I'm like, we would, it would probably be better off just like flying to Alaska and renting bikes for however long we were going to be there. Have you thought about what your next bike, my bike, bike might be? No. Um, I mean, besides the Africa Twin. I will always want the Africa Twin. However, realistically, I am just not somebody who sells a bike and buys a new bike. No shade to dork on the road. Maybe a little bit of shade to dork on the road. But, like, I just, I'm just not somebody who, like, buys a new bike and sells the old bike, like, roll over like that. I, I only sold the Tiger because it was the only bike that I owned that had a payment on it. Um, because Briarios was a gift. I bought Lazarus outright. Like, uh, the Honda Shadow was a gift from my dad. He traded a four-wheeler for it. Um, Paul Bunyan, the 1972 CB175 that, like, nobody knows about because I haven't showed it in a video, like, ever. <laughs> um, that was just on our property. And I just asked Dad if I could have it. And he was like, sure. Like, I don't remember who it belonged to anyway. So that's mine. Um, the Bad Ivis Moped I bought outright from my brother. The Coleman Pit Bike we bought outright for Rocky Mountain Roll. Um, so yeah, the only reason I sold the Tiger was because it was the only bike that I owned that had a payment on it, and it just didn't make sense when I had the when I had Briarios and I have the Shadow and I have Lazarus, um, and between all of those bikes, they all kind of cover what the Tiger was capable of. So yeah, <laughs> um, and I'm yeah, I'm just not somebody who's going to buy a new bike for no reason, and definitely not right now because I just cannot afford it. Um, like, I don't know how much money you guys think I make, but I really don't make a whole lot and definitely not enough to, like, add a bike payment on top of living and, pay, like, doing the things that I need to do for the YouTube channel right now. Or, like, paying for travel and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> Canada West Coast is beautiful, especially the runs into the mountains in mid and northern BC. Definitely. The Dalton Highway is really long gravel road. Suckage level high. Yeah, I talked to Scrabble Stories when he came back from doing the Dalton. I was like, if I'm going to go to Alaska, it's not to ride the Dalton. And that might disappoint some people, but I just don't have the interest in doing that um, currently. Like, the only, like right now, the, the reason for doing the Dalton is specifically just for, like, the high suck level and to come back and say that you did it. And, like, there is too many other beautiful things to see in Alaska to waste time doing the Dalton when it sucks so much. Does that make sense? I don't know. Um, Like, it would be, of course, really cool to, like, ride up to the, um, oh, my God, what is it? The Arctic Circle sign. Like, that would be cool. But that's, like, that's not the whole Dalton. That's not going all the way to Dead Horse, you know? And especially Dead Horse being like an oil town, I just don't have interest in going. You can't you in order to go see the the uh, the Arctic Ocean, you have to take one of their bus tours. Like you can't just go on your bike. I, ugh, yeah, Juno is essentially landlocked by the glacier. Flyer boat, and last time I was there, um, 
I ended up sacrificing my phone, tablet, glasses, and other misc items on my 700. Oh, ouch. Ah. Oh my gosh, Gary, I'm so sorry. Wow. Maybe a lot of shade. <laughs> <laughs> I think like most of the shade is just because people keep asking me if I'm also going to buy new bikes now. And I think it's like as a result, like, cause we have a, a pretty big overlap between Dork and I. And so they're watching Dork on the road, get a new bike, sell the old bike, like pretty frequently in my personal, from my personal perspective. And I'm over here like, nah, nah, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> But people keep asking me because they're watching him do it. I don't know. I, it's not. It's not my. Not my. My jam. I'm glad that it's working out for him. I'm stoked that he's stoked. I'm stoked that he got a T7 because that is like gold right now. I'm very impressed that he was able to snatch one up. But yeah. Hi, my done life. It's good to see you. <laughs> How did you talk Josh into camping? Uh. <laughs> Uh, funny story, um, I think probably around, oh God, I want to say September, September of 2021, he did a live stream and I was just like watching it in the background while I was doing other things. And he and, uh, Shaylisi made comments about hate, like they hate camping. They hate camping so much, like tent camping. And I was just like, I was like, oh, for giggles and jokes in the comment section, I was just like. But if I rode all the way across the country, like from Portland, Oregon to Tampa, Florida, would you go camping with me? It was a joke. And they were like, they like, Josh especially was just like, was like, well, if, I mean, like if you rode all the way across the country, I would go camping with you. Like, yeah. Yeah. If you, if you, if you rode all the way here, I would go camping with you. And that just kind of sparked a thing in my head. And I was like, oh. But he agreed. Like, he could have very easily been like, no, I don't like camping. I'm not going to go tent camping. Um, that, that would have been a very easy response. But he didn't. He said yes. And so the moral of the story is never say that you will do something if I do something. If, you're, if you don't want to. Because chances are I will hold you to that. Like, especially if you do it on a live stream and there are witnesses that's that like can say you agreed to it so um that i guess that was longer than i meant i meant it to be a short story but uh that's how i got josh to go camping because i texted him in like january or february and i was like so you said on live on live stream with people watching that you would go tent camping with me if i rode there so if i go there in march will you go tent camping with me, with me for real and he's like i said that and i was like you did and he was like well uh, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I will be riding to Dead Horse next June, hopefully, on the Rebel 500. I'm getting it adventure ready. Maybe we can all meet up there. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Uh, I make no promises. I agree with her. The rides to Seward, Homer, Valdez, Chicken, etc. You don't need to ride the Dalton to ride Alaska. Yes. Thank you. Wolf Flight. Is that the Ice Road Truckers Highway? The Dalton? I I think, yeah, I think that's the, uh, I don't quote me. I don't, I don't watch the, um, the reality TV stuff. So I, I, I don't know for sure. Glad you're home. It's not what you, you have. It's what you do with it. You do very well. Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate it. I get way too attached to my bikes. I sold my 84 700 Shadow and still regret it. I have two bikes now. Oh, I'm sorry you had to sell your Shadow, John. Or I, maybe you didn't have to. You chose to. But um, I, 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 I'm sorry. I've heard that story so much, though. Like people who sold their first bikes or sold like some bike that was very meaningful to them and they regret it so much. And like that's part of, uh, I think, has fed my hoarding of my motorcycles because like I will never get rid of Lazarus. I won't get rid of Lazarus. I won't get rid of Hephaestus and I won't get rid of Briarios. Um, those three bikes mean so, so much to me. Like Lazarus being my first bike and I have such a deep, deep connection with that bike because it also taught me how to work on motorcycles in the first place. Um, and, 
yeah, I will get rid of everything else before I get rid of Lazarus. Um, but it will it will come to very, very desperate straits for me to get rid of Briarius or Hephaestus. Like, <laughs> they are my babies. They will not be going anywhere. Knock on wood. I was disappointed when Dork in the Road sold his KLR. That's kind of my dream bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see where was i whiskey increases story length exponentially <laughs> that's true i'm like halfway through the second drink so <laughs> good night jeff thank you for being here i had my sportster for seven years last year i decided to sell it and buy a larger bike now i wish i bought a bigger one <laughs> Oh, bigger than what you ended up buying. Chris said the Dalton was probably the ugliest part of Alaska that he saw, but I got I got a return of st uh, stone he got for me in the Arctic Ocean. <laughs> Have you considered a trip to Key West? Um, like, I I thought about it when I was first planning the cross country trip because I knew I was going to Florida, but um. So much of what I enjoy about riding is being in the mountains, doing twisty stuff. Um, I, of course, like wanted to go to Florida because I haven't been able to mark it off of my like map list. I want to be able to say that I've been to Florida so that I've been experienced that and that kind of stuff. But the the only reason I even wanted to go to, to Southern Florida in the first place wasn't because of Key West. It was because of the, um, the Everglades National Park. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cause the more research that I did about the key, about Key West and like riding the keys, the more that it doesn't sound like it's something that I would enjoy and not like not to knock anybody who really loves that ride. Um, or like, uh, uh um, I think Doodle just did the keys and like, uh, watching her videos is kind of enough for me. I know that sounds terrible. Um, but like. I, I think it's very important and like good if you know exactly what you enjoy about motorcycle travel travel and what you don't and being in the keys just doesn't sound like fun to me um and i think that i would spend a lot of it uh very high high anxiety because there's no way to escape there is one there's like one main road to get you in and out of that area and there isn't a lot of space so there it is high high people high people ratio and uh that notoriously makes me very very anxious and so i'd probably have a, more than one panic attack um and it's not it doesn't sound like fun doesn't sound like fun and that's not saying that i pro won't ever do it but as of right now in the time that i have available to me that is not what i wanted to spend my time doing yeah <laughs> When are you going to show us how you make such epic trip videos? Mind in life, I have two videos right now up that talks about how I make videos. Go check them out. <laughs> Too much money to keep all those bikes on the road. <laughs> well, I like, I, I, you know, I, I feel like the ones that are getting ridden are the ones who take the most money because you're doing all changes and that kind of stuff. Um, Lazarus has been in storage mode for three or four years, five years maybe? Five years, I think, uh, Lazarus has been in storage mode. Um, so, but yeah. And then uh, Hephaestus has been in Montana, so dad has been taking care of Hephaestus. Um, yeah. So, like really, Brigarios is the only one like, like actually taking money actively. Uh, my bikes are named Galileo and Co Copernicus because I live in the in a fifth wheel toy hauler. That's I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> bikes are like kitchen knives. You need more than one because they all serve a specific purpose. I agree with that. Yes. <laughs> um, like, and I've said it a couple times. So, like, I feel like the the big holes in my garage right now is a dirt bike and like a a big cc adventure bike like so if i get an africa twin and like a wr250 <laughs> those would fill the holes pretty well <laughs> uh, 
the East Coast is such a long ride for you. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, it is a ways. So I, I like, I have to, I feel like I have to be pretty specific about what I want to see while I'm over there. You need to come back to Ohio and have Jess talk you, take you to the Windy Nine. The, they are epic roads through Southern Ohio. I, I did a little bit of riding through Southern Ohio. Did I not, did I not hit any of those? It isn't terrible of you. You do you. Thank you, John. I appreciate you. Will Rocky Mountain Roll have a quiet time as opposed to Forgotten Angels? Yes. Rocky Mountain Roll has quiet time every night. Like uh, the last few years, we we put out the fire and everybody has to go to bed or you have to whisper uh, at midnight. And if I can hear you, uh, you are too loud. Uh, I, I think there's only been like one or two years where I've had to yell at people for uh, being loud enough for me to be able to hear them in my camper. Um, after midnight, um, most everybody is very respectful of the of the nighttime cutoff, um, and we do that partially because there's a ravine on our property that really makes the sound echo, and all of our neighbors can hear it. And we want to make sure that we can continue to do the event without our neighbors hating us, because that's important. It is our home, and we want our neighbors to like us. Um, and that plan has been working out great because there's actually like a neighbor at the end of the road that we were most concerned about because like when people get off of the, the main road and get onto our dirt road, it kicks up a lot of dust and it goes straight into their house. So we've been very intentional about telling people to maintain a strict speed limit on the dirt road going to our house to make sure that the dust doesn't kick up for those people. And they love us. They love seeing all the motorcycles. And I attribute that to partially people being very respectful of our neighbors, like coming down the road, but also like our ability to maintain like quiet time at night like so that that noise isn't echoing out to all of our neighbors and they can get the sleep that they need um and just people being respectful in general so like they let us put the banner up on their fence every year um be, like i like, started like two or three years ago and there's very kind people and they're kind because we are kind because we are respectful of their um of their home and of the quiet time all of the things um but yes, Paul, the general answer to your, your question is that there is quiet time at Rocky Mountain Roll. <laughs> your bikes have interesting names. I suggested Megan naming the 500X the Halfling, the Samwise, or Frodo, because it's a Africa twin. <laughs> I mean, like, the Halfling is a good name. I like that. Cheers to listening to your gut. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Florida is not great riding. Alligator Alley in, in Flamingo Beach was cool, but the Keys is a great party. But Utah and Cal Colorado are the best. Yes, I need to go back to Colorado so bad. I want to go back to West Virginia really bad. It is amazing how Doodle rides those huge bikes for a small woman. She gets it. Like, she's, she puts her mind to something. She said, I want to do something, and she does it. And I love that about her. Like... Rolling with Roland, as a Florida-born native, Swamp Druid, I escape into the Tennessee mountains as often as possible. <laughs> I have had the ZX9R for 14 years and 60,000 miles. She has earned her name, Old Faithful. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. My super tenere is named Zahara. Oh, I like that. So much history on the East Coast. Definitely. There's a lot of history on the East Coast. My Buell Ulysses is named Odysseus. I've met that bike. It is a good bike. It is a trusty bike. You should definitely ride the Missouri and Arkansas or Ozarks if you like the twisties. Yeah. The Ozarks was on my list for the 2020 trip. It just didn't work out because of time. But like, I definitely want to go to the Ozarks for sure. Adve the KTM 790 Adventure is the Swiss Army knife of motorcycles. <laughs> is uh, snoring considered whispering? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, snoring is fine. That's fine. <laughs> My snoring would get me yelled at. Biker Babe Beth, hi. Thank you for being here. Hello. Yay, Colorado. I'm partial. I live here. <laughs> yes. Just bought another bike today. Well, congratulations on new, pu new bike day. That's awesome. Thanks for the updates after your trip. Always fun to watch your live stream. Thank you, Darren. I appreciate you for being here. Welcome home. Thank you, Two Vegan Two Wheels. Two Vegan Two Wheels kept me fed this trip. Like, thank you, and probably will kept me fed for like the rest of the summer. They sent me a bunch of dehydrated meals, and I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you, thank you. 
not to worry. If I ever get to Rocky Mountain Roll, I'll be too old to make it make noise after 8 p.m. <laughs> well, like, that's the thing. Like, the vibe at Rocky Mountain Roll, I think, is, like, very different from Forgotten Angels. Like, uh, so many of the people who come to Rocky Mountain Roll, like, come to Rocky Mountain Roll, like, for, like, a halfway point on a bigger trip that they're doing. Like, the point is to have, like, a nice, like, a couple zero days to just hang out with people and have, like, a chill time. Um, like we are not party people. Like obviously there like is alcohol, it's BYOB, but like that's why it's 21 and older. But like the point is not to have a rager, it's like to have like a nice couple calm days and then have like an awesome ride home. Like awesome ride there, awesome ride home. That's that's the main point of Rocky Mountain Roll. <laughs> and so I think the vibes are like different. Uh like I had a couple of people email me and complain about the fact that uh, Rocky Mountain Roll is the first weekend of Sturgis. And I'm like, if you are stoked for Sturgis, if like that is your main goal and you are hyped for Sturgis, I don't think Rocky Mountain Roll would have been your jam anyway. We are very, very low key. Like uh, there's no band, you know, there isn't free booze. Like no, like the point isn't to have a rager. The point is to like hang out with other people who really love their motorcycle and really love traveling and like hang out and have a chill weekend. Like, low-key, let's hang out, and then we'll, like, do our miles again on the way home and have a good trip. I, like, that's that's what I think Rocky Mountain Roll is about. Hello from West Virginia. Stop in. You have a free steak dinner. Oh, thank you. Just installed the windshield, which made the wind noise a lot worse. Not easy figuring it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ouch. My snoring, my snoring would get me kicked out. Hello, but yeah, John Thomas. I live near the the Boothel. Boothel. I don't. Hi, love. Yeah, congrats on getting back from your trip. Thank you, Beth. I am so glad I got to meet you in person. That was amazing. Magpie meet up at barbecue and blues in Arkansas. <laughs> I I don't I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Ulysses Ulysses isn't yellow. It's yellow. <laughs> Not gonna lose that one in a parking lot. <laughs> That's accurate. Oh, Road Warrior Moto is here. Hi, I'm sorry if I missed you. <laughs> Hope you get to Rocky Mountain Roll sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone needing a crash pad in Arkansas for barbecue, let me know. Oh, thank you, veteran biker. You're the sweetest. Rocky Mountain Roll is super chill and lots of fun. Last year, I went to the Craters of the Moon in Idaho. This year, I'm considering going to Glacier. Yeah. Also, um, for those thinking of going to Glacier, just remember that you have to have tickets in advance. Um, so there's no just popping in. You got to have tickets. Um, I think there is a time window. So if you go super, super early, like stupid early in the morning, you could probably get in without a ticket, but just know to plan ahead of time. Um, I'd like to sit up, sit up in the big house and have a cup of coffee with your folks. And I'm like, you can have a cup of coffee with my folks down the field. They come down for breakfast on Sunday. I like low-key. Sturgis is not my thing. See, yeah, like, Rocky Mountain Roll is for us. <laughs> it is to camp and enjoy the motor lifestyle. Yeah! Was planning a cross-country trip this summer via the tat on the KLR, but I blew my ACL a couple weeks ago, so I'll have to live vicariously through the channel. Looking forward to seeing the trip. Oh, I'm sorry, Lance. I hope that you heal quickly. Beth told me she got to meet you in person, and no, I'm not jealous at all. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure we will meet in person. It will happen. We will cross paths. Sorry to hear you laid up, Lance. Yeah. Okay, I have to take a bathroom break, you guys. We're at two hours. If there's still people here, we'll keep going. But I have to take a bathroom break. I'll be back. I am sorry for the mic. Protect your ears. Oh my god. I gotta get up somehow. Oh jeez. Oh god. <laughs>
Hallelujah! <laughs> okay, protect your ears. There we go. Wow, you're like all still here. This is crazy. <laughs> Hi! Okay. Hi, I'm back. Thank you for waiting for me. Yeah, yep, went to get to Glacier and maybe next year. Yeah! Love your channel. Got a 2022 CB500X. Need to outfit and explore. Oh, that's awesome! That means you have the 19 inch front wheel and you do not even know how jealous I am. Oh my gosh. Made great friends and took some great group rides at Rocky Mountain Roll. Also, the ride to the farmer's market was great. Oh, thank you, Darren! Ride to farmer's market is like one of my favorites. I also really enjoy the ride to Missoula to Montgomery Distillery because Gary has to lead and I get to like play sweep in the back and I love that. <laughs> I saw, I say anyone with a moto vlog that wants to do Alaska, I would love to buy you dinner and assist in any way. I'm trying to do what I can in my own way to rebound tourism. Oh, that is awesome, Wolf Light. I think that is awesome. I love that very much. Totally agree with Loki. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Robert should be washing the Valkyrie, but this is more fun. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Glacier has some night construction this summer with uh, GTSR closed. Oh, going to the Sun Road. Will prevent my favorite go at, at 5 a.m. Check ahead this summer. Yeah. It's just like, it's just some, it's just easier to buy your ticket for sure. And also it supports the park. So that's always good. Um, most of the national parks are tickets to enter this year. So make sure you check before you get here. Yeah, I made a post a couple weeks ago. I think that there are um, eight or 10 national parks that you need to have a ticket, like, and you can't buy it day of. You have to, to purchase at least 48 hours ahead of time. Um, Carlsbad that Cavern was that way. I believe Yosemite is that way. Glacier is that way. Um, uh, I can't remember the rest of them off the top of my head, but it's always just very important to plan ahead for national parks anyway. Double check the website so you can see what is closed and what is still accessible because there's also been closures for um, upgrades to certain parks. So it's good to know ahead of time if there's going to be a, clo a closure due to construction or because of landslides or other things before you go out of your way to go to a national park and so that you're not disappointed when you get there <laughs> and also that so that you can get in. <laughs> I might have gone to Sturgis a few weeks ago, but I'm too old to do stupid anymore. <laughs> Zero patience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully no construction next summer. I really want to head from there up to Banff and Jasper. Yes. Tennessee Motorcycle and Music Revival at Loretta Lynn's is a great hang with music. It can be low-key or ripa. <laughs> oh my God, going like... Uh, Loretta Lynn's would be so cool. That would be awesome. I suggest a yearly pass for the parks, also if going to more than one. For sure. Like, and, But just know that the America the Beautiful Pass, which is the yearly pass for all the national parks and national monuments, doesn't include tickets. Like, Tickets is totally separate. So even if you have the pass, you still have to plan and purchase your tickets ahead of time for the time slot to visit certain national parks. Normally, the ticket price is very, like, minuscule. Um, it's mostly just to make sure that, like, they have timed entry to try to spread out people um, so that you have a more enjoyable visit to the park. Um, I'm very, very glad that uh, Carlsbad was doing tickets because, like, there was still a lot of people in the cave with me. And I can only imagine how many people would be in that cave if they hadn't moved to the ticketing system. It would have been really overwhelming and very difficult to enjoy the cave um, without being distracted by everybody else. <laughs> that was a quick visit. Nobody go nowhere. <laughs> when does the America GP start or has it already been raced? I, th I think MotoGP is this weekend. Oh, it is this weekend. Today is Saturday. Oh my god. What is time? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> 
I heard Angel's Landing is lottery for the bus season. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That reminds me. There's, like, a bunch of parks in Utah that are lottery, like, for for different hikes. Um, not necessarily entering the park, but for different hikes for sure. <laughs> I think Dad also started following Biker Bay Beth, too. Yes! <laughs> Robert, I did wash my hands. Shout out to you for visiting Temple, Texas. Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Is there a good specific season for Alaska riding? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think like the height is like what, like July to September or something like that? Or maybe August and September? Good night all, getting called to dinner here at Ride Safe and quote awesome YouTuber, get out and do the thing. Ah, oh, thank you, AT from AZ, have a good dinner. Just wanted to say that you and a few others have inspired my wife to decide to get back into motorcycling. Just put a deposit on a CRF 300L yeah rally winning that's super awesome cheers <laughs> it's already tomorrow for robert <laughs> blue ghost thank you so much for the super chat cheers just bought triumph street triple 765r how i can find now i can finally throw my training wheels away <laughs> i hope that you enjoy the bike blue ghost that's awesome happy new bike I'm trying real hard to make surges this year, but there is so many events I want to go to. Yeah, that's like the real struggle as a motorcyclist is like the deeper you get into the motorcycle community, the more events that you find out about. So like you have to pick and choose. Like even even though YouTube is my full job, my full time job now, I still have to be like I still can only pick a handful of events to attend. There's only so many time, so much time in the riding season during the year, so there's only so many things you can attend. <laughs> <laughs> also, I will be presenting at the PNW Overland Expo in Bend, Oregon. Um, so come and say hello. It would be lovely to actually have people in the audience. So I'm not by myself with like two other people being like, why am I doing this? So if you're in the Pacific Northwest area, Northern California, Idaho, Washington, um, even northern Nevada, like that's not a big, like a huge drive. Um, come to Bend for the PNW Overland Expo and come to my talk so I don't feel alone. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> it's like my, I think it's gonna be one of my my uh, first times doing like big public speaking since I worked at the dealership. So like, it'll be the first time doing big public speaking since twenty, the end of twenty eighteen. The beginning of 2019 um i don't count rocky mountain roll because like we're all friends it doesn't feel like public speaking <laughs> three days of night is actually a decent decent horror film based in alaska <laughs> yeah <laughs> hi from virginia glad to see you got your hat fixed enjoy your travels um uh this is this is the the Baileys for the record. It's, it's seen better days. Uh, this is my, uh, my other Stetson that I purchased before. This isn't the one that I lost, but it's my other Stetson. Um, <laughs> different hat. <laughs> Ozzy Jack Miller is back on the grid. Hope he wins. He had two, uh, horror rides this year so far. Ouch. Good night. Bye, Darren. Thank you for being here. You're probably gone already, but thank you. I have some experience with Alaska having a little place on the Kenai River since 2001. If I can help you out on a trip up north to do, let me know. Thank you, Robert. That's awesome. <laughs> Can't decide if next bike is 500 Ninja for track or the DRZ 400. I mean, I would pick the DRZ 400, but obviously I'm biased. You know life is good when you can chaperone a prom and join Amanda's live stream. <laughs> thank you, Mark. I'm happy that you're here. Biker Babe Beth, thank you for the super chat. Cheers, my lady. For the next trip, keep getting out and doing the thing. Thank you. Oh, you, you're the sweetest. I prefer an empty audience. That's why I have Beth to address the crowds for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah when i went to like over the expo west in flagstaff they were like oh well you could you could do one of these things you could do one of the presentations and i was like mm, yeah i guess 
but like I wasn't expecting to have to write out the presentation and know exactly what I was going to present like months in advance. And I am having a real struggle figuring out what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Still, I'm still working on that part. <laughs> it's like one thing to be like, yeah, I'm going to do a talk. And then I have to sit down and figure out exactly what you're going to talk about, especially when you weren't asked to talk about something specific in the first place, you know? Hi, Desert Dave. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I've caught up on the chat. Okay. Do I do a little dance now? I don't know. <laughs> okay, but okay. I, I think I'm going to do last call for questions. Does anybody have specific questions about how the trip went? Like the cross country trip? I've got a lot of generic questions. I have found literally every video of yours to have value. Oh, thank you. That is like the sweetest thank you talking will come naturally I don't, I don't know about that public speaking is a struggle for sure when it's on the spot oh yeah you want to talk about on the spot josh coming up to me behind forgotten angels and telling me that i'm going to get up on stage and say something i'm like what am i going to say he's like i don't know just say something and i'm like i what that's terrible advice <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was painful. That was bad. I'm sorry anybody who witnessed that. That was bad. It's like, it's one thing talking at, at Rocky Mountain Roll because like I have things to say, like representing all the wonderful people who support Rocky Mountain Roll and like talking about them, making sure people know about it. And then like, also that's my area. That's my jam. So like I, I have things to say. I have things to say, let alone like, like being asked to speak at somebody else's event that like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What, what, was, what was I supposed to say? I don't know. CB's not here to do chair dancing. <laughs> Tell me how the water jug worked. Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Um, if you don't know already, I purchased, um, well, I didn't purchase. My partner purchased for me um, a product called the Moto Jug. Uh, which is more like the hose and the str like strapping system for like a one gallon uh, stainless steel jug. I guess you could get a plastic insulated jug as well. I opted for an insul insulated steel jug that kind of sits on your passenger peg and then the hose goes from the jug up to the rider. So like up to the handlebar. So you can like pull on the hose, drink from it while you're riding instead of having to wear a, a hydration backpack. And that was awesome! It was so good. It was so good. Um, I didn't realize how life changing it was until like I was in the middle of uh, Big Bend and thinking about the fact that I didn't have the weight on my shoulders anymore. Like it felt so second nature right out the bat. It was, mm, it was so good. It's highly, highly recommended. Like if you have a bike where you can put a moto jug like on your passenger peg, life-changing <laughs> i know that moscomoto makes the tank bag that has the water bladder pocket in it and that's obviously an option um but i just don't like the idea of that especially since i keep my camera gear in my tank bag so in the case that that water bladder accidentally got popped in some crazy eventuality that water would damage my camera gear and i'm not here for that um, so the Mojack made more sense. And also, I'm sponsored by Wolfman. It would be really weird for me to have a Moscow tank bag. That's a whole separate thing, though. <laughs> um, yeah. Mojug, awesome. Highly recommended. I'm very, very glad that I had it. I know. Dang it, Josh. Yes, for real. We're all just happy you got back in one piece. Yeah, I am too, for sure. Okay, actual question, do you plan around weather or just plan your route and deal with the weather um, when it gets in the way? Um, so uh, there are instances where I have rerouted due to weather, um, 
the cross country trip in 2020, I rerouted due to the weather because there was like the, that tail end of a tropical storm that went inland. Um, that's all the rain that I hit in West Virginia. I was actually supposed to go north and hit Boston and then go uh, down south to North Carolina. And I ended up cutting out Boston and that whole area entirely because um, that was the direction the tropical storm was going when I was going through. Um, so I opted just to stay in Virginia and then head straight to South Carolina. And uh, so that's an example. Also, when I was doing the pilgrimage, I cut out the whole um, northeast corner of Montana, like Plentywood and that whole area because of a gnarly storm um, that was going through. I had to, I camped in when I was in Fort Peck and it kept going north. So I went south. So I cut out the northeast corner of Montana due to weather. Um, I don't necessarily plan the trip around weather. Um, I think this trip in March was the closest thing that I've done to that just because I knew that it would be warmer the, the further south that I was. So like a lot of the route was as far south as I could put it um, trying to stay warm. But it's not like I, I looked in advance to see like where like rainstorms would be in advance or anything like that. I was just thinking about being warm. That was it. Um, so a lot of like, I make my route in advance, um, just thinking about places that I really want to go and what the, like the general weather, like the temperature is going to be like, be like, not necessarily like if it's going to have rainstorms or not. And then when I get there, I do a lot of on the fly decisions and there's a lot of like modifying the route, but that's, I think is the benefit of doing so much planning ahead of time because like I, you, you make an idea of what your route is going to be. And then you do a lot of research about the stuff that's around the route. Um, so that in the, ch in the case that you have to reroute or something has to change, you have already done the research. So you know what your options are, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of rerouting that happened from what I thought I was going to do, but, um, especially like camping. I thought that I had it banked for this trip. I thought that I had enough backup campsites that it would have been fine. But you know what I didn't take into account when I was planning all of those campsites? Spring break. <laughs> I called those state parks and asked them if it, like, if it was normal, if I just showed up, if there would be a spot. And a lot of them were like, yeah, absolutely. But what I didn't take into account or, and what I didn't take into account when asking those state parks about the time frame that I was going to be there is that state parks are packed during spring break. It just wasn't, yeah. <laughs> the couple of times that I camped in Texas was like out of sheer luck and also because I pre-booked my sites in Big Bend and Big Bend Ranch State Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, would have been here sooner, but busy editing. Hi, Desert Dave. Wonderful to see you. Biker Bay Beth, what gear did you realize you might need to upgrade or replace? Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. I mean, like, I obviously had to replace two tires while I was on the road, but I knew that that was going to have to happen. Um... Ooh, this is an excellent question. I have to think about this for a second. But first, let's thank Scrabbler Stories for this, the super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, Towards a celebration of another successful trip. Thank you, guys. You are my favorite. Oh, God. Stuff that I need to upgrade. Um, I definitely want to go back to the Big Agnes Diamond Park bag. I missed that more than I thought I would, but I absolutely love the new X-Ped sleeping mat for sure. I, I, lo I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I think uh, the, the sleeping mat that I have now that I took on this trip was the X-Ped Dura AR, which is the updated version of the sleeping mat that I had last season, which is like the down my dead. The, bleh, wow. We know that I'm at the end of my second drink, don't we? Um, was the down mat XP9. That doesn't sound right. Down mat 9. Something like that. Um, the one that I have this season was the upgrade version of that mat that I had last season. So <laughs> it's not hard to make a, like, a better version of a mat that was already amazing. Um, but yeah, re uh, 
I don't know if that's replaced though, because I already own the big Agnes Diamond Park zero degree bag. I just want to go back to it, <laughs> even though it takes up so much space. Oh my gosh. Take, speaking of stuff that takes up a ton of space, um, I took, I was debating about whether or not I was going to tell you guys about this because I'm kind of embarrassed a little bit. <laughs> I bought this giant brick um, of a, like a RAV power battery bank. Uh, I was in talks with a couple of different companies about um, sponsoring a power bank for the trip. And I ended up just purchasing with my own money this RAV power uh, power bank um, because it had AC outlets that put out, um, I want to say it's 120 um, uh, in, uh, sine wave inverter power so that I could power the laptop at camp if I needed to. Because my other power banks, like I have a Goal Zero 100 Yeti, 150 Yeti, and those uh, AC plugs are only one, barely 110. Um, and so they're not powerful enough to charge my laptop. These were powerful enough to charge my laptop. And it's one of the very few um, power banks that I could find that would do that. So I sacrificed some space to carry this big boy around with me. And I have a little, little, little bit of regret about it. The nice thing about having like a power bank, like a big boy like this, was not worrying about, there's like three USB plugs here and then two AC outlets on the top. And I was never worried charging like umpteen million batteries that I was going to lose, like I was going to run out of power on this because it is big boy. <laughs> um, however, it does take up a lot of space. Like it is a chonker. <laughs> um, and I never ended up using my laptop at camp. So the fact that it has like the 120 AC pole, bleh, the 120 AC output didn't matter because I didn't end up using the laptop off of this anyway. I just ended up going to hotels whenever I needed to, to upload. Um, so it was a little bit of a waste of space, but it was also nice because it was like a nice flat surface in my tent. So it was like a table. <laughs> this sounds hilarious. This was my nightstand in my tent. <laughs> like I would have stuff plugged into it and it would just sit on top and it was like a nice little nightstand. <laughs> But um, yeah, I have, conflicted, I have conflicted feelings about this. The reason that I purchased it, I did not use it for. Um, it turned out good for other stuff. However, I'm not entirely sure that it was worth the space that it took up. <clears throat> Maybe I would have felt different about that if I had been able to camp at all of the Texas state parks that I had planned to camp at, but I, I wasn't able to, so yeah. Which it seems to be a theme every time across the country I end up at mo more hotels than I thought I would be. And I think that it's time that I just accept it and that I'm just going to like hotel one night, camp one night, hotel one night. That kind of ended up being the little bit of a pattern. There was a couple of times where it was like hotel, hotel, and then camp. But for the most part, it was like hotel, camp, hotel, camp, like that. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had a lot of wind going through Texas. We get bad winds here in springtime and very sorry you lost your hat, but glad you got a new one. Thank you, Blue Ghost. I appreciate that. How bad were the winds in Texas? <clears throat> well, <laughs> um, apart from losing a very expensive satellite messenger to the Texas crosswinds, um, uh, I didn't actually check what the miles per hour were when I was crossing Texas going to east. I should have. I didn't. Um, I was much more focused on staying sane and maintaining some kind of level of emotional stabi stability uh, during the first crossing. Um, coming back, I know that when I try to set up my camp in Monaghan's Sand Hills, that there were 30 mile per hour winds not like gusts like just the wind speed was 30 miles per hour constant and then higher gusts <laughs> um which was an awesome and i can definitely say that the gusts when i was going east across texas were higher 
than what I experienced in Monahans. So I'm sure that it was like probably closer to 50 mile per hour winds when I was crossing Texas going east. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I also, I had to camp in that. Like, uh, I set up my tent at Big Bend Ranch State Park and it was perfectly calm when I set up my tent and at 5 a.m. the wind kicked in. And it was like that all the way across Big Bend the whole time I was doing Old Ore Road. And when I set up my tent on Old Ore Road, the, the wind was atrocious. It took like big, big boulders to hold my tent down because I had no other option but to camp because I was in the middle of absolute nowhere. There was no service. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to, edit, to the edited last, latest ride. You will be a rock star at your presentation. Don't sweat it. Everybody is there for the same thing. We love riding. Travel stories are the best. Thank you, Eric. That's the sweetest. I bought a hydration pack, but don't think it will work. Maybe the Moto Jug might work for me. Yes. Like, I, I still, I don't regret having the hydration backpack for, like, the last almost 10 years of riding. But I think that the Moto Jug makes a huge, huge difference when you're spending, like, more than four days on the motorcycle and doing big, long mileage days. Um, yeah. I think the Moto Jug would have been amazing for the cross country trip for sure. Um, but it was only at that last trip that I went to Overland Expo in Arizona in September where I started to really have shoulder pain from my backpack that I started to like actually notice. And that's why the Moto Jug was a uh, mod modification for this trip. Backpacks don't make for comfortable riding. Accurate statement. <laughs> Did you learn to blow the warm water back into the jug before getting a fresh drink from Paul? Uh, only, I only started doing that when I got to Arizona because that's not, like um, going from, so west, going west, um, second half of the trip from Florida to California, like the weather from Florida to Texas was just kind of mild. It was just okay. Um, like it was like that mid zone like the happy zone where like you're fine you don't have to add more layers but you don't have to take off more layers either so it was like that happy zone and then from um new mexico to arizona to california especially the arizona to california that is when it started getting hot and that's when i started blowing the water back up the hose so that it wouldn't be hot <laughs> <laughs> But like, I know about that because mo less because of the hot water and more from um, working at REI, like one of the big theories is that like, especially when it's below freezing, you have to blow the water back up the hose to keep the water in the hose from freezing during the winter time. And of course, like it makes sense in the summertime to keep the water from being hot in the hose, you blow it back into the container, but yeah. <laughs> Most of us like don't having weight on our bike. A weight on our back. Accurate. Yes. I am in North Carolina now, next week in the 70s, going to ride the Blue Ridge Parkway. Oh, I love the Blue Ridge Parkway. It was the best. One of my dreams is doing the whole Blue Ridge Parkway. That would be so much fun. I feel like that would make a good video, right? Doing the whole Blue Ridge Parkway. Are you going to try to get to Northeast on your next cross country trip? Yes, Northeast is definitely a target for the next time that I do a cross country trip. Don't get too excited. I don't think it's gonna happen next year. Um, maybe 2024, who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I have, there are so many states in the Northeast that I haven't gotten to see. Um, so that's definitely my next target for doing another cross country trip. Here in Alaska, we don't get the option of changing routes. The routes between some locations are one path and those paths may cover more ground than crossing most states in the lower 48. Yeah. <laughs> I have an aluminum uh, RTIC jug. Ice and water stays cold all day in the summer unless on a trip uh, I don't ride that long without uh, stopping anyway. Uh, yeah, I think the, the stainless steel jug that I end up, ended up with was an RTIC jug. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, I took my dual sport out to an OHV park today. And now when I get back, there's a ATMF live stream 
best birthday ever. I'm so glad that you're here, Garrick. I'm glad that you made it. That's awesome. I love embarrassing decisions. <laughs> I just, I, look, I think the next time that I do a cross country trip, there has to be like a Biker Bay Beth and Magpie like camping trip. I feel like that is the next thing. That would be really fun. I just got the Diamond Park 15 bag and I'm looking forward to using it on my moto camping trips this year. I got it from Moto Camp Nerd, of course. Yes, Nancy! I hope that you love it as much as I love my zero degree bag. Like, I, I feel like that is the it is the peak of comfort. Like, ex well, when camping, if you're not glamping, you know what I meant. I can't get a USA visa. I got a criminal record from 40 years ago. Oh, I'm sorry, Robert. Nice to know about Glacier. We're going there after Rocky Mountain Roll. Yes. Yeah. Very important information. Some video, I like to see how you pack everything on your bike because I have no room for a battery that size. You have, you must have Mary Popper, Mary Pop and tight bags. I mean, like the, the double bag that I have is like 40 liters. So I would call that my Mary Poppins bag for sure. I'm out of soda, so we're just going to put a little bit of whiskey in the bottom of my glass. Yep. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, but yeah, I, the best way that I can describe it is that um, I kind of split my duffel into like uh, four quadrants, and then there's two little tiny pockets on each end. So one quadrant is my tent, one quadrant quadrant. Oh my God. One quadrant is my tent. One quadrant is my sleeping bag. One quadrant is my sleeping pad. And then the battery pack takes up the fourth one. And then I stuff uh, the, um, the rumple, this blanket. I stuff it into one side and then I stuff my uh, down jacket in between the uh, tent and my sleeping pad. And uh, then my pump and like some loose ends go into like the little holes that kind of end up on either end of those quadrants. Um, but yeah, there isn't a whole lot of room to roll it down. I think uh, it is a squeeze to get three rolls out of the top of my duffel with all that stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> is Airbnb an option? Um, Airbnb is an option if you think ahead of time. Uh, the problem, the struggle that I've had with Airbnb as somebody who wants to like just do the miles that I want to do and the stop when I'm tired is that Airbnb often doesn't do like immediate books. So you need to book a couple minimum like six to eight hours in advance to make sure that the host has time to approve your stay. Or at least that's the last time that I used Airbnb, Airbnb that was my struggle. So I had to make sure that I booked minimum two days in advance to have the host have time to approve my stay for me to stay there. Um, a lot of people also suggested Hip Camp, which is actually um, the app that I was going to use to stay at the Llama Camp in um, south of Dallas, Texas. But I didn't realize you needed to like reserve that spot a whole week in advance because that Llama, Llama Camp is so popular. Uh, I thought that I could like book it like a day in advance and I would be able to camp there, but that was not the case. <laughs> and so I think that like if you have short mileage days, like probably 250 mile day, 250 mile days, I feel like then it wouldn't be a big deal to like book a bunch of your spots in advance. However, like I booked like the first week of this trip in advance and I only hit like half of the spots that I booked in advance. I got the Joshua Tree Camp that I booked in advance. I stayed there. I didn't make it to Oregon Pipe. So I had to stay, I stayed at a hotel in Yuma instead. Um, so I was like, I paid for the hotel on top of having already paid for that campsite. It was only 20 bucks, keeping in mind. Um, just because I like was so tired, I could not make it there. And then um, I made it to the Big Ranch State Park that I reserved and then the campsite on Old Ore Road that I reserved in advance, but I didn't make it to Seminole Canyon, which I was supposed to stay at after Big Bend. But I didn't take into account 
dropping the bike three times on that road. Um, so by the time that I finished Old Or Road, the day that I was supposed to get a Seminole, I was only halfway through the day. So I only had like half of the day to get a Seminole and that wasn't enough time. And I was so tired and so ready for a shower. <laughs> so I just stayed at a hotel that night. Um, so like 50% success rate on uh, pre-booking the campsites for the first week of my trip which isn't awful, but it's also not great. <laughs> and like the real struggle is that like, um, having done the cross country trip twice now, like so much of the East coast, the only way or realistically for main routes, not talking about like really, really back road sites, but like main routes, like main secondary highways, near the interstate or anything like that, or near popular areas, the only way to have a site is to book in advance. And that's just not the way that I like to travel. I hope that I'm still making sense. <laughs> I have a Jackery 500. I'm having the same thoughts about taking it on my next trip in about 50 days. Yeah, it just takes up a lot of space. It just takes up so much space. Just got here. Is your tent set up in the motel room? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have officially made it home. Uh, this tent is set up in my living room, actually. How many national parks did you hit during the trip? That is an excellent question. Joshua Tree, Big Bend National Park, um, Carlsbad National Park. Uh, is Gulf Shores, that's a national, sea sh national seashore. I don't think it's a national park. Um, and then I hit uh, National Monuments. I hit Waco National Monument and Gila National Monument. Um, oh, Saguaro National Park. Um, I think I'm missing something. Um, I also hit uh, Peter Nallis State Park and uh, Chico State Park. Chicote State Park. I don't know how to say it properly in Louisiana. Florida Cavern State Park in, in Florida. Um, oh gosh, I wish I had all my pouches and pins laid out in front of me. <laughs> uh, we're just going to say like in general between national monuments and national parks. Oh, I hit White Sands National Park as well. So maybe like six national parks and like two or three national monuments that I can remember off the top of my head. That power pack seems like something I would buy because more is always better. <laughs> yeah. Like, as always, I'm always trying to prepare for being off-grid for longer than I realistically actually am. Always. I have, like, this, these beautiful dreams of just, like, being off-grid for multiple days. But it, ne it never happens. <laughs> The winds here in Texas are crazy. I have 300 cc's and I worry about riding in it. these winds. I much rather ride in Florida, my home state. Come to Montana, go to Western Montana. Adrian, go to Western Montana, go to Idaho. The riding in Idaho is so good. I just did a deep dive on their website and it looks like it's just one woman making these hydro, the, the hydro jugs. Is it a woman making the moto jugs? I thought it was a, a guy. I don't I don't actually know. I know there was a woman in the video, but for some reason I thought it was a guy making the moto jug. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's a very small, it's a tiny business making moto jugs, for sure. Um, do you have any tips for handling crosswinds on a bike? I have tall bike, KLR, and a and a time or two I feel like I was in danger of being blown off the road. Thanks for doing what you do. Thank you, ground powder pounder. Um, yeah, like the just probably what I said before, like take lots of breaks. And um, honestly, if the wind is too much, like if you have a headwind and your bike can't stay up to speed for what the traffic is doing without around you, find a different road that is a lower speed limit. And then um, it depends on who you talk to. Some people say higher gear. I say lower gear. Um, the, the CB 500 X performs so much better in wind and a lower gear that is going to kick up your RPMs. But as long as you're under red line, 
um, the higher RPMs are fine, exp like if, especially if you more if you have more control of your bike. Wow, words are. <laughs> Biker Big Beth, yes, we would have too much fun camping together. You'll be like, wow, Joss was less of a mess. <laughs> Ellie, like, <laughs> I, I don't know about that, Beth, because, like, I feel like you would know how to set up your tent and where the, the tent stakes are supposed to go. <laughs> Whiskey is good. Yes. <laughs> aluminum. Oh, right. Like, isn't the English way to say aluminum al al aluminum? Is that how you, how the you... UK people say it. I'm in the trash. <laughs> tomatoes or tomatoes? Is that what you're supposed to say? I don't know. Really hard to say quadrant after a few ounces of whiskey. <laughs> this is reminding me that I haven't actually had any of my Arizona whiskey since I got back to Arizona. Oh man, yes! Yes, <laughs> very important. Wait, there is a place you can camp with llamas? Yes, John, there is a llama farm on hip camp where you can camp in the llama field and llamas will come and say hello to you. And I was, it was one of my top, top. I was so excited to get to camp with llamas and not getting to camp with llamas was devastating you don't even know it was so sad i had a rough day when i realized that i couldn't i didn't wasn't going to get to camp with llamas <laughs> jeff i don't know what the question like why do i need a trailer i don't know camping lesson set up a tent before drinking yes actually the biggest camping lesson like if you're going to go to an event you know you're going to drink is that you set up your tent yes before you start drinking Get your sleeping bag out, set up your sleeping pad before you start drinking so that your sleeping bag has enough time to puff up and be warm before you try to crawl into it. That I think is more important than remembering to set up your tent before you start drinking. <laughs> you really know your shit. I would be three sheets of the wind on uh, the bottle by now. I would be no good at answering any questions. <laughs> well, I'm gonna take that as a compliment. <laughs> I've set up camp even though it was too hot for me to be able to sleep just because I'd already paid for the site. The next time it was too hot and I'd already paid, I just went and got a hotel. Yeah. Like to me, like, yes, I had already spent the money to reserve those sites, but they were just camping sites and it was only like 20 to $30. Like I wasn't in the hole like $100. Like if I had reserved a hotel for $110, $150, I would have made it there. <laughs> Um, but like for me, especially those couple of nights that I missed my reservations, it was like $20 or stopping when I need to, so that I'm not being dangerous on the road because I was so tired. Oh, wow. <laughs> I will probably cut back how many times on this trip I told the camera that I was tired because it would be so repetitive that it would be annoying. <laughs> Mostly stay at pubs on my road trips. Ooh, that's interesting. I don't know any pubs in the United States that also have hotels in them. I'm sure that there are, but I've never, I haven't come across them. In the living room, that explains the cat stalking in the background earlier. <laughs> yes. Hello from Vancouver Island. Can't wait to see the videos of your trip. Thank you, Denise. Gulf Shores is a state park. No, I think there's a Gulf Shores and then there's Gulf Shores Nas National Seashore. I remember that. Mammoth Cave. I don't, I haven't been in Mammoth Cave, but that sounds like fun. My question for you is, would you ever use a motorcycle specific GPS, i.e. Tom Tom Rider 550, etc.? Um, that's an excellent question. Uh... I might use it if it was built into the bike, but I don't, as of right now, like I obviously I can't predict in the future what I will do, but as of right now, I just don't see 
the use for a motorcycle specific GPS, especially with the amount of off-road riding that I do. And notoriously, um, the GPSs that I have experience with just do not have accurate off-road maps. And that's part of the reason why I, I started using Onyx Software in the first place before they even sponsored the channel. Um, a, much more accurate borders between public land and private. And that was very, very important to me. And second, they have so much more accurate off-road off maps than Rever, than Google Maps, than like a lot of the other options. I think the only big competitor is like Gaia, but um, Onyx was just like the better, better option for me personally. It was more user-friendly than the competitors. And um, from my experience of using like Rever and Google Maps, they just cannot compete with Onyx's updated maps um, for off-road use for sure. Like I used to have to host motorcycle um, group rides uh, for Carl's Mystery Ride and we were trying to use Rever and it was honestly a nightmare because like a lot of the like off-road roads on Rever are not accurate in the PNW. <laughs> it was it was a rough time. <laughs> Um, I think that uh, Onyx Off-Road has a collaboration with um, uh, one of the uh, GPS companies now. I can't remember off the top of my head. A uh, few more sips. Next, you'll be talking about vasectomies. <laughs> Just follow the street signs. Yeah, that's true. Like when I did the, the pilgrimage, I did that trip without GPS. Like it was one of my rules that I wasn't allowed to look at Google Maps while I was on the road. I was only allowed to use paper maps and street signs and asking people for directions. Um, and I got around just fine. <laughs> the only, I think the only time that I ever got lost was like uh, trying to get to Helena uh, from White Sulphur Springs. Pretty sure, yeah. That was the only time I got lost. I didn't get lost for, lo for very long. I only had like one wrong turn. Aluminium. Is that how you, is that how you can say it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Dork and the snip snip conversation. The conversation and my cocktail has worn off. Yep. The right way. <laughs> Don't llamas spit at you? Ask Scott. Yes. Llamas will spit at you if you look at them the wrong way. We actually, we rescued a very old llama. Like when I say we, I mean like my mom and my dad on the ranch when I was in high school. We rescued a very old llama. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you looked at him the wrong way, he would spit at you, but he never spit at me. <laughs> I think he can tell, I think llamas can tell if you are scared of them or if you have bad thoughts because then they spit at you. <laughs> Camp with ostrich ostriches. I, I would be more afraid of ostriches than llamas. It was absolutely a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> when I rode to New Mexico in June 2021, I wound up staying in a hotel in Albuquerque when I was facing 100 miles and 100 degrees. Ugh, for, ugh, yeah, I would, I would too. Wow. Ouch. Gulf Islands National Seashore. Thank you, Kathy. We got to go, but good night, everyone. Congrats a minute. Thank you, Scrambler Stories. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. We're heading on three hours. Wow. <laughs> question. Pan America or Africa Twin? That's not a question. <laughs> Africa Twin. Absolutely not a question. Africa Twin. <laughs> How are you liking your new hat? Denise or Dennis 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 how this is the new hat the new hat has seen better days the new hat needs love and affection it did not enjoy being strapped to the bike as much as my old Stetson did <laughs> it was it had a rough time <laughs> <laughs> If you let a raccoon steal your granola, I would think a llama might steal your bike. No, no, Lee, no, absolutely not. And plus the raccoon only got my granola because I was lazy. I was in the South. I didn't have to worry about bears. So, 
So yeah, I got really lazy. I left my food and like my whole food bag under my vestibule instead of putting it back on the bike or hanging it like I normally would have. So that is the reason that the raccoon got my granola. Also, the granola wasn't even in my food bag because it was like a brand new bag that Kathy from Eco Swamp um, Tours, not Swamp, Eco Tours of the South Mississippi, um, the lady who runs those tours, her name is Kathy and she was amazing and wonderful. She gave me a brand new bag of granola and it was too big to put in my food bag. Um, and I, d I just didn't put it in my food bag. So it was like in the top of my, uh, I have like a bigger bag that holds like my camping equipment, my spices, my spices, and then my food bag. And so the granola was like separate from those bags in this bigger bag and it was sitting on the top. So it was easy access. Raccoons are creatures of opportunity. They grabbed the, the granola. They crawled underneath the platform because this is when I was camping at Chicote, Chicote, Chicote. I can't remember how to say it. Louisiana State Park. And the campsites are like on wooden platforms. So the raccoon came into my vestibule, grabbed the granola, drug it underneath of the platform and ate it for like two hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye, Nancy. Thank you for being here. Yay. <laughs> Llamas are a quadruped. Llamas are dangerous. If you see llamas where people are swimming, yell, danger, there are llamas. John, I have questions about, like, your experience with llamas. I have so many questions. <laughs> Did you experience any sulfur water in Florida? I understand that's a thing. Uh, Eric, I did not go swimming in Florida. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but when I'm traveling on the motorcycle, I'm just not a water person. Like... Uh, water person in terms of like seeking out swimming holes, like going to hot springs, going to ponds or like rivers specifically to um, go swimming. I don't know why. I just, I, it's not something that comes up in my brain as something fun to do when I'm on the motor, when I'm on a motorcycle trip. And part of that is like, I don't want to deal with wet hair after the fact. Um, but also like just the whole process of like getting into a bathing suit out of my riding suit, going in the water, the water is fun, but then coming out of the water and dealing with like drying off to a point where I can put all my regular, regular clothes back on, let alone dealing with wet hair as a girl, cause there's a lot of it and it's not pleasant having wet hair in a helmet. <laughs> um, all of that, all of that. Uh, it, we did go we did go in a river, um, Tara and I, when we did the Idaho BDR, but that was more to like lessen the stink than it was to go for a swim. And like we I we put our feet in a river, but I didn't go swimming. Um stuff like little little things like that. Kevin, thank you so much for the super chat. Cheers. This it's just whiskey at this point. Thank you, Kevin, for the super chat. I appreciate you. Um, anyway, uh, the simple answer to that question was no. I did not experience the sulfur water in Florida. <laughs> Where was I? Thinking of driving from Pennsylvania to Seattle and I'm over 70 years old. My son says no. Charles, do what you want to do. As long as you are not putting yourself in more than harm's way than is necessary. Like, obviously, I don't know what your health situation is or if you are um, disabled and what that would, how that would affect your trip. But do what you can with the time that you have. That's what I say. Almost 11 miles per hour here and you still have 114 people in attendance. Oh, miles per hour. 11 p.m. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, and this is when the, t the speaking starts to deteriorate. 1 p.m. now. Just had a pasta salad and a banana for lunch. <laughs> Us East Coasters are diehards. 
<laughs> for real. Oh my gosh. The East Coasters and the people in the UK are super diehards. Oh my gosh. Monty Python skit about llamas. <laughs> Australian East Coaster. Oh my God. Too many snakes and alligators in Florida. <laughs> question. Actually, also, before I answer the question, I didn't get to see any alligators in Florida. Very disappointed. <laughs> Is 105 liters of storage enough for motor camping? Planning my first long trip up the PCH. Um, let me let me do some math here. Um, let's see. Each one of my panniers is 20 liters. So 20 plus 20, that's 40 liters for my saddlebags. And then there's 40 liters in my duffel. And then I think that my rollies are like 10 liters each. So yeah, 100 liters should, like 110 liters, 105 liters should be more than enough storage for moto camping. Because like when I first started moto camping, um, I had 10 liter saddlebags each and the duffel that I had was only 20 liters. So really you only need 40 liters to go motorcycle camping. I'm just a hoarder, so. <laughs> I find more and more things to take with me on the bike. <laughs> if you have the space, you will fill it. <laughs> my cross country trip, I would just walk straight into a river with all my gear on. Uh, no. <laughs> I did not get to see an alligator fall. Serious question. What kind of whiskey? Oh. It is a bourbon whiskey. It's called the Polisher. This is a, co a collaboration between Montgomery Distillery and CC Motorcycles. Um, and my wonderful partner like had a whole escapade trying to find this for me. It was at, at a liquor store down the street from CC Motorcycle Coffee uh, on Sandy in Portland, Oregon. Um, I uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, Montgomery Distillery, for the record, is one of my favorite distilleries. They're based out of Montana. Um, they're one of those companies that can genuinely say Montana made and uh, I love it. It's good. I, um, I'm very biased though. Like, while I love this bourbon, it's a good bourbon. I love Sudden Wisdom, which is Montgomery Distillery's rye. I, I like that a lot. <laughs> Amanda has whiskey eyes. <laughs> Hi, Magpie. Glad to see you back home. My wife is jealous. We, because we, I'm always watching you because you are so inspiring. Oh, thank you, Kenneth. I'll show this to my son. Good night. Be safe. Bye, Charles. Have a good night. Math while whiskeyed up. Now taking bets if she gets it right. Hey, <laughs> that's not nice. I'm from the middle of the mitten. What is the mitten? I don't know what that means. There is a gator in the lake at the Forgotten Angels camp out. There was? What? Nobody told me this. <laughs> Good night, Lee. Thank you for being here. Bye. <laughs> but yeah, for real, nobody told me that there was an alligator in the lake. That's not. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey. I cry. You cry? Is that a song? I don't know. Good night. Off to bed. Bye, Beth. I'm so glad you were here. Bye. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna plan a trip with all of the, the, the Ohio ladies going camping. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. I don't know when that's gonna happen, but. I want to get to the UP before I'm too old. Upper Peninsula. Is that the Upper Peninsula of the Pacific Northwest? Or which peninsula are we talking about? <laughs> oh, Mitten is Michigan. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate you. Good night from Ontario. Bye, Eric. 11 p.m. You are a trooper like well done 
Yes, Michael Martin Murphy. Cowboy Songs album. Okay. Yuppers. Hello from Claresborn, Alberta. Oh, Claire, Claire's home, Alberta, Canada. Your northern neighbor. Hi, Mary. A little gator, only two or three foot baby. One usually on the lake on the left if you're looking off the property down the driveway. Oh, okay. Okay. UP is Michigan. Oh, oh. Amanda is getting schooled. <laughs> I see. Yes. <laughs> three feet next year, it'll be three yards. Yeah. <laughs> Hello from Las Vegas. Seen through my lens. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Have you calculated the last trip cost? Um, I can give you what I wrote down. Hold on. This is just for everybody who has been here for like three hours. <laughs> $5,500. That is how much this trip cost. It, it was expensive. Almost twice the cost of the first cross country trip in 2020. Ouch. <laughs> That's what I said. Barbara was texting me and didn't see it. <laughs> oh, I am being reminded that it has been three hours. <laughs> it is 8 p.m. my time. <laughs> uh, have you ridden the Olympic Peninsula? I love that drive. It seems like riding the curves around the peninsula would be awesome. Drove it two years ago. Um, I have ridden a section of the Olympic Peninsula. Um, I have been to Townsend, Washington, which is part of the, the Olympic Peninsula. Uh, but I drove there in a car with my partner. But I have ridden to like the southern part uh, of, the, of the, the Olympic Peninsula, like close to that little national park that I can't remember the name of right now. <laughs> Um, but there's a lot of Northern Washington that I haven't been to. Um, I have been to a lot of like Southeast Washington and the Eastern half of Washington, but there's a lot of like, cause I really want to go to North Cascades National Park. Um, th that is one that I really want to hit up and I have no excuses for why I haven't been there besides the fact that the only time that you can really enjoyable, enjoyably watch ride we're going to wrap this up soon because it's really difficult for me to come up with words right now. Um, I have the only time that you can enjoyably ride the Northern Cascades National Park is like uh, July and August. Um, that is like peak season for North Cascades. And uh, July and August is also like heavy event months for me so like i'm doing rocky mountain roll i'm doing get on ADD fest like also july is pnw overland expo as well so like those are packed months so it's very difficult to like also make time to go up to, to the north cascades but i'm gonna try i'm gonna try <laughs> If you you're ever up for a ride on Vancouver Island, hit me up. Thank you, Den Dennis. I'm sorry I keep trying to call you Denise. I'm gonna blame the whiskey. Amanda is a is a fun and entertaining drunk. Thank you, John. I'm glad somebody is being entertained. I've got to sign up. Mom is leaving. That is my sign that I need to <laughs> shut down. Um, good night, Mom. I love you. <laughs> Have you considered an Alaska ride? Somebody else asked me that earlier. Um, yes, would love to go to Alaska. Probably going to end up having to fly there and rent bikes um, for various reasons. Amanda needs to visit Michigan. <laughs> Hello from Austin, Texas. Just got home from MotoGP and saw this live. 30,000 subscribers. That's amazing. Thank you, dad with the bike. I appreciate that. You're awesome. Yeah, $5,000. Uh, well, $5,500.
I added tires and a lot of hotels. Not too bad. Thank you. I, um, so statistics wise, um, I averaged $152 a day. And, uh, the reason I didn't want to answer questions about how much this trip cost, because like, not only did I add two tires, but also I had to buy a lot of SD cards on this trip. And like a normal person wouldn't have to buy new SD cards almost, almost every week. Um, and I don't mean like one or two 128 gig SD cards. Every time that I had to buy SD cards, I had to buy like two 128 gig micro SD cards or two 128 gig like standard SD cards. So um, that's minimum almost $100 a week just for SD cards. <laughs> uh ouch <laughs> uh yeah and like a normal person would not have to buy all of these sd cards you know <laughs> like um but yes agreed all of the hotels definitely added up for sure and yeah it was it's a lot of like weird things yeah how much was gas in uh, more and how much because more hotels. Okay. Let's look at the st st my statistics. Um, I spent $2,082 on accommodation. Gas was $1,200 for, for the truck and for the bike. Um, the $1,200 was for the truck and the bike. So that was 8,900 8, miles in total. Um, and so the truck was like the 600 miles from Portland and back, like, so from Portland to Sacramento was 600 miles. So 1200 miles in the truck and then 7,791 miles on the bike was $1,200. Um, yeah, uh, ouch. <laughs> um, uh, tires were $463 for two and labor. Well, labor for one install because the second tire I got for the cost of the tire, they didn't include labor on that one, which was awesome. And that was a special that they were doing, not because I was a YouTuber. Um, bye, mom. There's a, that's a lot of money to camp with Josh. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of money. Um, I don't think about it as like a lot of money to camp with Josh though. I think about it as like an events, an investment of content that's going to get me all the way through June. So like the, the series, once it starts publishing at the end of April, um, one episode a week will get me all the way to the end of June and then supplementary, um, content as a result of this series will get me through the beginning of July. And like, that means technically I don't have to film anything for the whole rest of April or the beginning of May, which is really, really cool. And like a big stress off of my back as a content creator, this is like a behind the scenes kind of thing. But, um, that's like, that's oh, May, like April, May, June, that like, that's close to three months worth of content. And so I like, I don't think that it was a waste of money in any respect of the word. Um, especially having essentially like a, a whole month break that I don't have to film. Like obviously I will be editing the series and that is a, a decent amount of work in itself, but I don't have to have the stress of coming up with what I'm going to film every week and also editing that content every week. I, like my only job from April to beginning of May is to edit this series, which is nice. It's nice to only have one job for a little while. <laughs> Bye, Road Warrior Moto. Thank you for being here. Uh, Shane, I will not start a campfire in my living room. Thank you, but no. <laughs> Bye. Just tuned in, saying hi. Glad to see your smile. Hi, Rebel Canuck. I'm going a similar trip this summer to New York from the West Coast on my CB 500 X. I'm so inspired by your trips on the CB 500 X and I can't wait. Oh, Dennis, I hope you have an awesome trip. 
um, be smarter than me and plan for it to cost five grand. <laughs> if mama Zeno says it's bedtime, it's bedtime. Yeah. I think we're going to wrap up here, you guys. <laughs> That's a fair point. Good night, Scott. Okay. For real though, if Scott is going to bed, that means that it's bedtime. Why all of the SD cards, asked John. Because I want two copies of the footage that I'm producing. So I leave the original footage on the SD card that it was recorded on, and then I copy it to an external hard drive. That way I have two copies. Um, if you go back and watch a video that I produced like at the end of September, beginning of October, um, it says creator's worst nightmare. And it's because I lost an SD card full of very, very important, important footage. Um, and uh, I didn't have a second backup of it. So as a content creator, it's very important to have two copies of your footage. And I choose to have a copy on an external hard drive and a copy on SD cards. So every time I fill an SD card, I have to buy a replacement. <laughs> Heard they are doing a run uh, shorty down and back. I don't know what we're talking about. Good night. Gotta get up early to cook pancakes. 7 p.m. my time, going to eat, glad I stopped in. Bye, World Flight, Wolf Flight, thank you for being here. Two wheels under big sky. <gasps> Sandy, hello! You just caught the end. I think I'm officially going to bed. I was busy in the garage taking my Honda apart. Oh, well, I hope that your Honda is in good shape by the time that you're done with it. But you know, we always want more content, <laughs> yeah. Don't they make uh, port 7 drives you can copy memory cards to? Yes. However, I still want to keep uh, another copy on the SD card. That's just the way that I roll. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm, a I'm officially saying goodnight, you guys. Thank you all so much for being here. I need to eat food after three drinks. <laughs> I appreciate you all so, so much for being here. A, a special, special shout out to all my patrons on Patreon and everybody who donated to the gas fund while I was on my trip. You were the only reason I was able to get home safely because uh, I only raised like $2,500 for this cross country trip. And obviously, like I said, it was five grand. So everybody who bought me gas money along the trip were the only reason that I was able to get home safely because I did not plan correctly for how much everything was gonna cost. So I appreciate you. You have no idea how much you mean to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to say good night. I will see you all next week. There will be a little highlight trailer uh, of footage from the cross country trip. And the following week, we will get into the polished episodes of this cross country trip. And I cannot wait to share it with you. Bye. <laughs>